Welcome to Truth Uncompromised. I am your host, Rhonda. Join us every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Truth is peace. Truth is justice and freedom to love, live, and be. Music provided by SourceVibrations.com All right, all right, family. Welcome to the Truth on Compromise show. I am your host, Rhonda, and tonight we have a great show planned for you tonight. I am actually excited about having um, Brother Seven Bomar, or rather not you want to call him Savan. He said he doesn't, it doesn't matter to him. Uh, Seven Bomar back uh, tonight. He was with us last year. So uh, he's going to join us. I'm not sure what he's going to speak on. I left it open. I want him to take the floor and um, kind of take it from whatever he feels uh, he wants to discuss tonight. Uh, so tonight is July 13th, and um, I did want us right quick, I'm, I'm going to bring uh, the family on. Hopefully, we'll have uh, just a couple minutes. Brother Seven is coming on at 730 uh, to kind of uh, sum up what our discussion was last week on the sun, the sun is feminine. Um, so let me bring on the family. Let me see here. See Brother Wendell. Let me bring him on. Uh, see Sean and uh, Sis. So just a second. Here we go. Let me bring on Wendell first. Hey, Brother Wendell, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm sitting in front of this thing trying to wrap up a little work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, hey, I can put you on mute and you just um, hit a sister up. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm sitting there on the computer. Yeah, yeah I'm, oh. I'm quiet on the computer. Okay, okay then. All right, well, let me um, bring in Brother Sean, and then I'll bring in Sis Sandra. So hold on, let me bring in Brother Sean. Greetings, brother. How are you tonight? Greetings, beloved sister. I'm good. Brother Wendell, how are you? I'm all right, my brother. How you doing? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Just ain't just to get this show started. I know, yeah. I know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm anxious for uh, Brother Seven to come on as well. Okay, let me uh, bring in sis, sis Sandra right quick. Greetings, Sis. How are you? Greetings. I'm fine. Thank you so much for asking. How is everybody? Good. Doing great. good. Doing good. 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 We are they gonna turn off this heat eventually? I heard they yeah, got my official son yeah. some. <laughs> yeah, ain't that ain't that something? Yeah, um, that man talking about this week. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I'm I'm gonna get in. We're gonna get into that real quick because we only gonna have 15 minutes. Um, so you know, last week the clip that I ended with, um, mm-hmm. and Brother Sean sent me another one. I didn't have time to uh, upload it on the artificial sun but uh the, the one i played from last week was from brother rich from boston that's the youtube channel and it's called artificial sun finally goes public in january now i have forgot brother sean that he had put a video out last year because he had found the patent Right. When they had just patented that technology, so I guess this video is the follow up where they didn't actually set up and start uh putting it in use. But what tripped me out now was him saying well, first of all, let's start with the fact that they even put put some shit like that out. Okay. Um, I know that's right. you know, I'll get into that in a second. But the thing that kind of blew my wig back per se with them 
in order for them to start up that particular technology, um, he said that it would, uh, I forgot the size of the city that he said, it's the amount of power that it takes to generate it. Uh, so it's, it's quite a significant amount of power that it takes to spin up this artificial sun. And um, it appears that they're only running it four hours at a time. And who knows, they, they've probably improved the technology. Now, here's the thing that trips me out. I remember when I was in, um, damn, where was I at? I think I was in Jamaica on vacation. Matter of fact, this was either last year or year before now, now that I think about it. So I'm in a little ocean, and I look up at the sun, and the same kind of glow that he showed in that video, it kind of looks like, a, it has the rainbow colors to it, but in no way is it shaped like a rainbow. You just kind of see it behind something. And so I kept looking at it. I said, damn, that just looks, and it was a clear sky, by the way, family, because I remember this clear. I'm like, I'm going to edge this in my mind and remember this, but this something is off about it. So I didn't know. I'm like, now am I, is this another dimension behind there or are they hiding the, the the second sun but you could literally see colors of the rainbow um behind the sun and um you know that's exactly what he showed in this video so that means they were testing it back then exactly Wow. So, you know, my take on the reason that they're doing this is a couple of folds. We, we'll go on the, the, the physical aspect of it first. Um, you know, the, the sun is definitely heating up the planet. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if you guys got a chance to see this uh week on the news, I think it was yesterday if I'm not mistaken, where the, the large one of the largest icebergs in Antarctica broke off. Yeah, okay. I heard. And it broke off a lot faster than they anticipated. They knew it was going to break off and they were kind of tracking the progress of it and said that basically it melted um, the acceleration of its melt rate it increased a lot okay so my point being the sun is really putting out a lot of energy and it's hitting the planet and um making it hot okay so now in in my opinion the reason that that is happening is as we stated several times on this show that we are enter, entering, not we are entering, we are in another age. Therefore, the frequency of the planet has changed and it's going to continue to change, uh, meaning uh, the vibrations are going to be raising higher. Uh, so this week, I got my weeks mixed up. We were going to do the show on the shift and ascension Um, We're going to do that next week. Okay, so with the sun beaming down, uh, a lot more energy, a lot more rays, the planet is heating up, okay? If you are not equipped, and that's not only from a physical perspective, meaning you don't have enough melanin to be able to... uh, Take the way the uh, the waves from a physical perspective, meaning your skin's not burning. Also, from a frequency vibration perspective, I really believe that they're blocking out that sun to stop those frequencies, those higher frequencies, from hitting the planet. 
because if you are not able to accept them, that's not going to be a good thing for, for you. Um, I okay. believe that's why a lot of people are going, not a lot of people, but some people are going stark raving mad. Um, they can't handle the, these energies. And even like some of us that are, you know, into the spirituality and we work on the spirituality, we feel the difference mm-hmm. when okay. as the planet is going through the ship. We go through various um, body changes. Uh, I mean, I could pretty much either if it's, chemtrails and and a lot of times I'm starting to think that it's really these new energies coming in I can pretty much my my family that are on the same wavelength as me with the spirituality most of all the time we get quote quote sick around the same time and it's usually we're getting the headaches that we can't shake or Mm -hmm. we're getting the sniffles okay so in my opinion, that is why they are trying to block out the sun. They're trying to uh, stop the process of the planet uh, going into a higher vibration mode and folks that are not able to handle the frequency or they're not able to handle it from a physiological standpoint, physical standpoint, um, they're trying to buy themselves some time. So I'll, I'll pause in case, you know, some somebody wants to put something on it. Well, we also, we also oh, yeah. know that we are sh- shifting into the galaxy, into another part of the galaxy, and we're going to mm-hmm. go to the galactical rift, which is the Milky Way, and the sun uh, has, uh, you know, like Nibiru, has many, many uh, suns with it. And mm-hmm. so that's... Another thing that may be a, a factor, too, that we're being inundated with more suns, and not just mm-hmm. our sun anymore. Our sun was supposed to be on a, a solar minimum, and now we're just like, like we're seriously at a maximum here with all this heat. And it's affecting the whole country, practically. Yes, or absolutely. Three quarters of it. Now I yield Okay, <laughs> great point, sis, brother Sean. Yeah, I can't. I can't recall if it was brother Rich from Boston video or the other video about the simulator when when he said that the alleged purpose behind them creating this was for carbon neutral fuel. What is carbon neutral fuel? Isn't that melanin for my inner and overstanding unless I'm missing something? Exactly, but neutral fuel, I mean, what, are they neutralizing our carbon or melanin? That makes sense. sense. And then he was saying that each one of those bulbs emit like 30,000 or more watts. I mean, maybe they're using that to melt the polar caps. They're trying to get to some of those pyramids that have been covered over. They're trying to find a way out. That's a a good point, Um, because I'm glad you brought up about them pyramids you're talking about in Antarctica, because um, Mm -hmm. you know, over, it it is said that over Antarctica there are uh, pyramids Beneath there, and um, folks even say the crystal pyramids um, are beneath there as as well. And uh, a lot of folks say that it's also the entrance uh, somewhere over in Antarctica is the entrance to in inner earth or Agatha. So. It's interesting that you say that they may be trying to melt it to get down, to to basically get out. Um, but I'm thinking even with that said, I'm like, are they that stupid? Because it don't matter. They can't get out. Because even if they go, let's say if they go, if they try to go in inner earth, because I still believe that there's an inner earth. I believe that 
um, it, you know, we're on a flat plane per se, um, but it's like stackable, if if you will, if you will, so like stackable planes. Um, and I'm not even sure at this point if it's a plane, because to be honest, we really don't know what it is. To me, it's all just energy. It, it's all just energy, and it's a hologram. Period. Okay. Um, but either way, they don't have the frequency to move, you know, between these different energy centers. But that could be the purpose of their carbon neutral fuel. They figure maybe that can help them get up, just like how with the space shuttle or this, that, or the other. They always got them black noses painted on it. That's melanin. They figure that's mm-hmm. melanin. Trying that's to break, get... break through something. Right. 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 Well, that that's an interesting uh, point about the about the carbon neutral. And, and the sad part about it is, and this, this just shows you either how desperate folk get or how stupid they are <laughs> or just a little combination of both because melanin cannot be destroyed. It adapts. So it doesn't matter what they call themselves putting up there. Uh, number one, it's, it's going to eventually be destroyed anyway. Um based on the way the energy from the sun, and I agree with Sis, we definitely have more than one sun. I've seen two suns with my own naked eye uh, twice. And um, there is a third sun behind just the the two regular size suns, if you want to say, um, and it is, I mean, it's huge. I mean, extremely, extremely huge. So now I'm not sure if that one, sis, is the one that is um, the central sun where it's it's like the middle of the galaxy uh, per se. But um, my point being, it doesn't matter what simulator they, they try to put up. Uh, it, it's going to be destroyed anyway. Truth. Well, you know, they don't have much time left. There's this huge morning planet up there in the eastern sky. And, I mean, it is huge. And if as we get closer to it, we're going to figure out what it is. And I've heard that the Nibiru is in the house. And and this is where all these changes and the planet heating up and the sun and everything is getting hotter and all that kind of stuff because of the magnetic influences that mm-hmm. need to be on the on the Earth. And that's that 36,000 years Year cycle. Mm-hmm. About to go through, 36. and we are in. Thirty six hundred. Yeah, thirty six hundred. It's the 26,000-year cycle around the yeah, yeah. sun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was hearing them talk that they feel that Moses, his escape to, from Egypt, happened at that point of time when it was on its path past the earth again. And, and they feel that a lot of the miracles that he accomplished, I heard this yesterday, he accomplished mm-hmm. was done because of the, the pull of that planet and the water parting and all that kind of stuff. So they, they were thinking that was at that same mm-hmm. time. That's, that's, the inter- that's the interesting point. That's a very interesting point. Well, um, unfortunately, sorry, family, we didn't get to go through all of um on the the sun is feminine, but hopefully you got the the gist of it um, about you know if you just go back a little bit in uh, some of the the ancient texts um, and the ancient mythology, you will definitely see that the sun was looked at as a um, feminine entity or deity, and then it changed. 
uh, over time. And I am willing to bet that that is around the time that the the feminine principle was uh, moved at, or declined, and then the uh, patriarchal society that we see today came on board, and that's when you start getting the other concept of sun being a male deity and um, Ra and Horus, et cetera, et cetera. But that was definitely not what the mythology said before, prior to the mythology of the Horus and Ra, et cetera. And ideally enough, what's very interesting to me is that, you know, once I thought about it, I'm like, you know, all of religion, and I just put a very good video out. The video is, is old, but um, this uh, white pastor, he really was throwing down on it. it it's on uh, Truth Uncompromised Facebook page. Another sis put it out, um, and I just reposted it. But he literally took sun god worship, and he proved how it is basically the story of Jesus and Christianity. And the same concept to me applies with the, the feminine being knocked out of her position as a divine being and having power. And we saw the, uh, ma- uh, the, pa- the um, patriarch society come into place and the patriarch rulership come in play, that's when you seen the worship of the the sun god being a male entity and then that translated into religion. And you know, even to this day, that's why folk use the terminology of father, they equate that to a higher power or a god. Uh, so I just found it very interesting. So hopefully you all got something out of it. And um, as I, I've told the family in the past, just please pay attention to um, the sun, what's been happening with the sun, particularly um, even the position of the sun itself. Uh, it has changed on where it rises, where it sets. Um if you're a sun gazer, you'll know what I'm I'm speaking on. Um, it, it, it changed position. If you sun gaze, you'll also start to see, hopefully one day you'll be able to catch the second sun because um, you can catch it either at sunrise or sunset. Um, and some say that you can even see the the both suns and then you'll see the real big sun uh it rises the really really big one that I was telling you about it rises first real quick it doesn't rise all the way it's it only rises a quarter of the way and i mean it's huge cuz it's going to take up the entire sky and then you'll see um one of the suns rise, and then you'll see the other sun rise. So our sun that we are used to is the one that that rises last. So pay attention to that, and I also still encourage the family to make sure that you start taking advantage of the benefits of the sun because as we discussed, they are not – you know, inventing all of this patent technology and putting up this uh, artificial sun to block out the regular sun or suns, plural, just for the hell of it. They're blocking it out because though that energy that comes to us through the sun um, is for our benefit, not only physically, But also, definitely, it impacts your DNA. Um, It literally unlocks your DNA. And those that are um, sun gazers, or if you spend time in the sun peacefully, you will enter and understand what I mean. Uh, Your meditation becomes a lot stronger, or even if you don't meditate, you're just all of a sudden 
you'll just start receiving messages. You'll start getting answers to questions that you've had. Uh, So I really encourage the family to take advantage of being one with the sun outside in nature. Uh, We are shifting back around. We have shifted back around into another age, okay? We didn't came out of the dark ages. Now we are into the golden ages. So all of the higher dimensional energies are much more readily available to us. And the sun or suns, I'll say plural, is definitely one of those avenues to um, get that particular information. So I'll pause in case somebody want to put something on it. Yeah. Um, I just still can't get around that carbon neutral fuel. Yeah, like that's the They're trying to block out the sun because the sun also burns up those chemtrails. Yes. I'm just wondering if that carbon neutral light also helps to keep those chemtrails in place. Also, to better help them project their blue blue beam. Yeah, that project blue beam stuff. I agree. Because you know, in order for them, Mm -hmm. in order for them to pull off this fake alien invasion and so-called. Spaceships landed on the White House just that the other day. They had to up their game. Yes. Yes. To- totally, totally agree. And and it's interesting um, uh, about the, the chemtrails because you're right. Now, let's start off with, and that's why it's important, too, for us to watch the sky. Not only are you watching the sun, you're watching the sky. You're watching the moon. Brother Wendell and I talked about the moon quite extensively. Um, It'll be clear as day. And, you know, if you want to check out the difference in the skies, fuck some old movies. Back in the 80s, back in the 70s, that displayed the, the sky. Totally different sky than than what you see today. Um, even the the color of the, the blue, the the beautiful rich color of blue that we used to have, is like gone. You have like this pale looking blue, and on rainy days when it rains, the rains wash away the chemtrails, and if you pay attention, every time it rains. After it rains, when it's a sunny day, if it's sunny, let's say the next day, you look up in the sky, you're going to see a clear, beautiful sky. You know, sometimes it'll be very, very clear. Sometimes you'll see the little puffy clouds that I was used to as a little girl growing up. Not this street shit. I was used to puffy clouds that look like cotton balls. Okay. So you will see this after a fresh rain. Nine times out of ten, before that damn sun set, you will see them start chemtrailing the sky in the direction that the sun set. I want to bring up a movie I watched years ago. It was a foreign movie, and it was a documentary-type movie. And it was in, like, a place called Italy or someplace over there. And Mm -hmm. what happened is that the people were contacted by aliens. And these alien um, uh, people, they never did see them, but they knew that they were, you know, getting in touch with them. And they said they had a war with another species of aliens. And that now this is an old, old old movie. Like it was, it was it was older than the time I was watching. It was like back in the 30s or something like that. Mm, mm-hmm. And they said that the barium salts is what they needed a truckload full of 
to kill the other race of aliens. So one of the main ingredients in chemtrails is barium salts. And they're using that because they know there are alien people on this planet, you know, uh, the Anunnaki's uh, prodigy, for one, then they're trying to use that to alter the DNA and to kill them out. And this is what this movie showed, and it was an old movie back in the 30s, from the 30s or 20s or something like that. Hmm. And so that's, that's, mm-hmm. that's what they're doing. They're doing DNA in there. They're putting DNA in the, the chemtrails. They're they're putting um, blood par- products in there of other species in there, and that's how they, they're they're trying to change us, us right as a people. Yeah. Right, right. Which is uh, not going to work because again, melanin cannot be destroyed. That's truth. And it adapts. It adapts um, to protect itself. Right. So they just wasting their time, but okay. <laughs> Talk to them, right? Hey. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Go get on, brother. You, you know. You know what? You know what aliens they really talk about, don't you? Uh, yeah, no, you tell me, brother Wendell. I'm gonna listen to you talk. <laughs> I, I, look, look, I got a, I got a little research pro- project going. Uh huh. <laughs> I have a I have a digitized book of the Georgia Code from 1822. Ooh, interesting. I'm like, I know, and, sis. I'm like, mm hmm. And mm. in this code, it's referred. To us, it's aliens. Yep, they do. <laughs> what? Ronald Reagan knew it. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I got a message, family. I'm not sure if this is just this person's phone, but they're saying they can't hear us. It's like every other word. Um, so if somebody just can press star one and confirm that you can hear us okay, um, I don't know how much I can do about it, but just press star one. Um, I am waiting. Uh, Brother uh, Seven should be here shortly. I don't see him in the queue, but if you so happen to be in the queue, brother, and your number is not showing up on my board uh, the way you were giving it to me, just press star one uh, to get in the queue as well, and, and I'll bring you on. Um, okay, so let me see, 615, if you can verify for me that you can hear us. 615, your line is open. 615. Hello? Yes, you're on the air, 615. Yes, I was just verifying that I can hear you okay. Okay, sweetheart, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Peace and love. Okay. Okay. All right. Somebody else said they hear me good. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. So, again, Brother Seven, if you're in um, queue, uh, just press star one for me. I don't see your number uh, show up. Hopefully, he can get through. Okay. All right, Brother Wendell. So, you said the code said alien, huh? It's referring to us as aliens. Interesting. That kind of leaves somebody else's theory of the Anunnaki dropping off to some other folks down here as uh, hmm, suspicious because I have heard that before many times that we are considered the aliens. Yeah. And they think that barium is supposed Mm -hmm. to kill us. Well, let's look at it this way. Now, I'm going to have to start some ish right quick. <laughs> now, this is just this, <laughs> this just my little opinion, my little raggedy opinion at that. <laughs> we can't be too that too much alien because who's adapting to this planet and who's not? I hear that. So, uh, 
that part, they could personally miss me with the BS. Now, I do feel that it was several species or beings that um, came to this planet and um, stayed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm just thinking simply from a nature perspective, the people that not we didn't have to adapt to this environment if that makes sense. We didn't have to adapt to living on the surface of the planet um because obviously the the, the melanin that we were given is able to tolerate living on the surface. So I'm not quite buying that that alien stuff. I do believe there are aliens, but to target it towards uh, specifically the melanated people, I'm I'm not buying that. Now that's that's just my little personal humble opinion. I'm just saying. I'm well, just saying. Well, I'm sorry. Go well, ahead, on, brother. Well, 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 they know. They know how far our history goes back. I agree. And, and they and they can't they can't fit themselves into that. Totally agree. Totally agree. And uh, let's look at be, it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because uh, to be to be, if you want to look at it for what it really is, we're aliens to that United States corporation. Right. 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 That's what I think they were talking about, um, aliens, a- aliens to the statues and codes. And now let's look at it at a deeper level. Let's let's fast forward from the, when did you say that was written, Brother Wendell, in the 18... 1882. Okay, 1882. So that was not too long ago. If we use 1776 as the marker a power change from uh, the melanated folks uh, in the Americas over to what they call in the founding fathers, that's not too far off. So that would make sense that they would write something as referring to us as aliens. And to me, anytime I look at any of their so-called statues and codes that they're masking as law, I always look at the spiritual component to it because at the end of the day, it's really all about uh, a spiritual warfare, okay? Um, So, of course, on their statue and code side, I totally agree with Brother Wendell. They are calling uh, the group of people aliens because they were never beholden to that uh, constitution. On the spiritual side, if you are a different type of species, a different type of being, then of course that other person uh, would be alien to you if they're not fitting into your particular bloodline as well. So now think of what we're faced with today. All you hear in lamestream media, folks complaining over in Europe uh, about the the Syrians and other folks coming onto their quote quote land, calling them aliens. And it's really, to be honest, it's happening all across the planet. You have Cheeto or Trump card talking about building a wall in Mexico. Now, to me, on the physical side, all that is is a saying is we're entering into into the age of the real caretakers of the planet returning to their rightful spot on Mama Earth, okay? So that's what all of this shifting around really is about, okay? I just saw something, and I'm not sure how accurate it is. 
Um, I tried to find information on it the best I could, and and I couldn't. But um, supposedly um, in Zimbabwe, Mugabe, you know, he cuts stuff on a regular so-and-so basis. He has ordered out the last of the white farmers off of that land. Okay, now I, I don't know if that's for sure. I just saw one article and I couldn't find anything else. And that article uh, was supposedly coming, coming out of Zimbabwe. Okay, that is just one example. And I feel the reason that's going on is because the rightful people or the caretakers that were given the responsibility to care for the planet, to keep it at a certain vibrational rate that the planet herself needs to be at, are returning to those spots. So that's what's going on with the, uh, the the physical perspective. You have the quote, quote, 1%, the dirty ones, the elite, putting out these racial wars um, about aliens from the European perspective, about Mexicans from um, our perspective um, in the Americas. They're putting out this propaganda to stop folks migrating back to these lands that was rightfully theirs in the first place. So I'll pause in case somebody else want to put something on it. <laughs> you know, South Africa is doing the same thing. They are up, up in arms against the uh, Europeans and trying to throw them out. And the Europeans are saying, well, we were here. We did all of this. We did all that. You know, and the, the thing is, how many universities did you tear down and cover up that was already here before you got your little booties there? Yeah, and, and South how many- Africa, they need to have several seats. Now, come on. South yeah. Africa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, why yeah, while they're talking that trash, they need to uh reveal how many of these uh major cities that they built on top of. Thank exactly. You. Exactly. And how they used to kidnap some folks off of ships so they can develop their own civilization because they didn't have any. Wow. Mm-mm. I and I I totally, totally uh, agree with you. Um, I'm sorry, Brother Wendell or Brother Sean, did you have something else before I go back in with my two cents? <laughs> no, no, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. As far as from the alien perspective, to me that time to the chemtrails and going to the movie War of the Worlds, they terraform mm. an earth to make the environment more friendly for them as opposed I, to... I agree. Them. I agree. And like you said, but, but the terminology being applied to the quote unquote Mexicans. I mean, the whole concept, even bringing up the term alien, ties off into the agenda that they started years ago when they had Orson Welles do that radio show, just to test and see how things would go. True. People. People literally thought it was an alien invasion. People killed mm-hmm. themselves, all type of stuff. <laughs> yep. So, I mean, yep. it's, it's a wicked game. And it takes us back to the thing that we always say here. You got to go within. <laughs> mm-hmm. Totally, totally, totally 1,000%. Um, agree because, uh, you know, I was just having this, I'm sorry, Brother Wendell, I didn't want to over-talk you if you had something to say. Um, if not, I'm uh, going to go I, ahead. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to respond just a little bit on that uh, alien thing. Sure thing. Uh, I always look at uh, the way they actually operate. They operate upside down and backwards, right? Mm-hmm. So... I take a look at this term, Negro. Okay. There was only one group of people that they called Negro. Now, you look at that word backwards. 
Look at that word mm-hmm. balance and see what it says. Now let me get yep. my little pen. <laughs> they got they they got they got these names in 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 uh That's Oregon, code. right? Uh uh-uh. uh. You close. You close, but you gotta think how they how they put the things in code. Negro origin, 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 origin. Original, 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 original. No, original gene. Ah, okay. I was looking at origin or original. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Original gene. Just like they did the word Indian. That's indigenous one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good point. That's very, very good you, point. Every, everything, everything that you see that they write, you have to you have to try to see what the reverse of that is. Mm-hmm. And you, you look at the title more. The word more means anchored to the land or tied to the land, according to mm-hmm. Horace it means, Butler. It means, it means tied to the land. Yep, yeah, that's exactly it, what it, it means. It means tied to the land. Because when, cause when you moor a boat, that means you tied to the land. Mm-hmm. And interestingly enough, even and I know you all know this, but even if you translate to, that to mirror, because they were saying that that's, where really more came for, from Mir M U U R, which that's tied to Lemuria, which goes back further than uh, the Pangea. Um, so you're right; it's the story is being told in the etymology of the words. You just right. have to decode it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very very good point. <laughs> that, that, that's all I was trying to say I wasn't trying to start no ish But I was just trying to get that point out So now who are they saying The alien really is Yeah mm. okay man. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely and, and interestingly enough I just got um, In the mail I started reading it I'll uh, let you all know How it turns um, out um, you all know the Empress of, of Washita. Well, she wrote a book and um, I just started reading the book. So it has been really, really interesting. Um, her going back kind of is giving how her ancestors saved a lot of the the historical information by mouth, um, and then some of them saved it by documents. So I'll let you all know uh, how that turns out. Uh, It's it's a very good book. It's called Return of the Ancient Ones. It's a little bit pricey, but uh, it's like 34 bucks. But I think it's worth it because she also has in there – uh, little snippets of the ancient map and what the names of those particular lands were called. Um, so I'll, I'll let you all know how that turns out. Um, I might even do a show on it on Tira Reading if I get a further along in the book to put some things together um, because it's it's for me, now this is just for me because I read a lot of stuff, I research a lot of stuff, and I can put the pe- I'm starting to put the pieces together rather well. And you can see you, you now. I think it is being revealed the true story of this planet, um, which if you look on at it to see how things were so hidden, but on the other hand, they were in plain sight because it's kind of sad that we really don't even know, and we're talking the majority of Americans, don't even know beyond what happened in 1776 up until today, and that was even lied about. 
So if you think of how old Mama Earth really is, <clears throat> excuse me, and if we can count, let's say we calculated at 4.6 billion years, just look at that little snippet of time frame for, what, 400-something odd years, that's nothing in comparison to her true story. Um, you know, but again, as I say, the beauty of it is all of these things are starting to be revealed because we are, that's why the age of information came into place. It makes a lot of sense now. Now, they call themselves the corrupt ones being slick with this age of information call themselves going to control the populace even more and spy on the populace, but we turned around and flipped it (laughs) because that opened up the doors for us to get access to a lot of this knowledge that was even, you know, hidden and books that we didn't even know to get, number one. Number two, we didn't have access to, um, you know, we didn't have access readily to people across the country like we're just doing now or across the world from for that matter um but but um, so the information age was truly part of the awakening of the people which i don't think they expected for that to happen and it backfired on them and now the um it's runaway now they call themselves suppressing it but there's no way at this point that they can totally uh, suppress it. So I'll, I'll yield in case somebody wants to put something on it, and I'm going to uh, see if I can reach out to Brother brother Seven right quick. Yeah. Uh, speaking of masks, uh, I don't know if y'all have seen this or not, but go and check out the lost continent of Laura Media. Okay, so what's that about just at a, a high level? And I'll be right back, family. I'm going to see if I can it, reach out to Brother Seven. It, it shows the United States in two pieces. There is a body of water that looks like a river that might, it might be it might be 500 to 1,000 miles wide. And it goes all the way down to uh, South America. All that is split. One side of it is La Media. The other side is Appalachian. And you'll see, and you'll see just north, just, just northeast of Appalachia, there's a chunk of land right there that looks like Africa. Mm. That's interesting. And when you say you saw that, at? It, you can go and find. You can you can you can uh, Google it. Uh, the Lost Continent of Lara Media, L A R A M I D I A, and take a look you know, at that. Brother Window, that sounds mm-hmm. like that um, the projection of the Navy map that the United States is going to split in half because this, with the this, new this. changes in uh, the planet um, Nibiru passing over, there's supposed to be a split. And the yeah, other continents but, that went down are supposed to rise back up. Yeah, but this one shows California that from all of California down to uh, a part of Mexico, the western part of Mexico, all the way up to Canada, including California, is on this map, but it's called La Remedia. Mm. So and it's in the east, California. It, yeah, and the east side of it is called uh, Appalachia. Or Atlanta, Atlantis, right, like it used to be, but it's called Appalachia, huh? Hmm. Yeah, you, now you know that mountain range that runs down to uh, down from the up from up north down to Tennessee. That's the Appalachian Mountains. Right, right, right. 
And Lantis over and, on that side too. Yeah. The old Atlantis, uh, you know, with the pyramids and stuff underneath uh, the near Florida and stuff. Huh. Yeah. But I'll, there's, there's picture with all of that underwater. Yeah. Oh, that's underwater? Yeah. And all the rest of it came back up? Mm-hmm. Or no? It's on the west side. Well, you yeah. know, they say the Nubiru is coming in from the southwest. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and mm-hmm. it's going to wreak havoc on the planet from the southwest. So, mm-hmm. hmm. and with the, the glaciers split in uh, apart, then a lot of the islands are are underwater or going underwater as well. Yeah. So, um, well, circle, huh? have y'all seen, have y'all seen the story of uh, what is it uh? Mount Vesuvius is on fire. I just heard a you lot know? of them erupting. And the caldera in Yellowstone is uh, oh, heating no. up too. Mount Vesuvius is on fire. This is way. This is this is the same volcano that destroyed Pompeii. Yeah, in Italy. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's on. It's on fire again. Wow. Wow, yeah, and Mount, that that is deep. And, and, and Mount Vesuvius really ain't that far from uh, Yellowstone. Hmm. So, so Mount, see, see, if you think in terms of underground, that whole oh, system is more see. than likely. That whole system is more than likely connected. Yeah, that big caldera, huh? Yeah. Okay. See, didn't he- on the map of hot carbon all pretty much all over the underground of the United States. That's that's what that's what they found over there under uh under Yellowstone. That's what's causing that thing to heat up over there. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, family, I'm not sure what's going on with Brother Seven. I couldn't get through on his number. He is um I can't remember if he's in Costa Rica. I can't. He's in. Yeah. He's in. Costa yeah, Rica. he's in, okay. He's in Costa Rica. I couldn't get through on his number, um, and he did email me. He had just emailed me two hours earlier and said that he was uh, on point. So hopefully he'll be able to join us tonight. I don't know if uh, the power was out or whatever. Uh, so. Hopefully he'll be able to join. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's interesting, Wendell, that you was talking about that that volcano system. Number one, the one that you said that exploded during the Pompeii times, and you're talking about that covered everything, right? Yeah, that's the same one. It's, it's on fire right now. And you're saying that's connected to the Yellowstone one? I'm just th- I'm just thinking in terms of proximity, it's just it's not that far away from Yellowstone, so it very well could be connected as a whole system. I, and I can't remember which video when um the the mainstream media was forced to admit that Yellowstone was heating up and uh, the the volcanoes and all that. Now, we've been reporting on that, what, Brother Wendell, going on Almost well over two, yeah, yeah, well, two years. This will be two, Brother Wendell. Yeah, 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 yeah this will okay. be two years. That's right. Yeah, yeah. this will be two years. So now we've been reporting on Yellowstone heating up well back then. So now they're forced to admit in the mainstream media that um, that's what's going on. So I saw a video, and I can't remember which one, because this was back when they were forced to admit that Yellowstone has these volcanoes, um, uh, it, that it was heating up underground, that that person said the same thing you just said, Wendell. They said across the planet, 
it is a lot of active volcanoes that have came online. Yes. Yeah. That are not being reported. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I ran across another story that they kind of swept under the rug, but I just found <laughs> it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Over over in Siberia, there's two huge craters that they say it just blew up. Now, what they're trying to say is their rationale for it is that the permafrost over there is melting, and when it gets to a certain point, it releases a lot of methane, and that's what blew it, make it blow up. But if you take a look at the, the, the uh, pictures that they snapped, of these uh, craters, they look exactly like the World Trade Center when they showed an aerial shot of, I think it was Building 6, where it had like three or four holes poked in it. It looked exactly like it. Interesting. <laughs> so something, something it's, it's, whatever's going on is bigger than that. Mm-hmm. And what I'm hmm. thinking is, if that is the case, what they're doing is poking holes in the earth where they know these systems are connected to give some relief to stop it from exploding. Mm-hmm. 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 That and let's not even miscount the sinkholes that continue yeah, to to pop up yeah. across the planet. They got they got big they got a big old they got a, a huge sinkhole over there, and it's it, right there in that same area somewhere in Siberia over there over there in Russia somewhere. Uh, it's a huge one. Now I remember when um, Master Teacher Dr. Dilbert Blair, in uh, some of his lectures, I want to say he talked about it in the nineties. And then he started talking about it again uh, in 2013 when he came back on the lecture circuit and when he was doing his own uh, biweekly shows or calls or whatever, that, you know, the pyramids that we have across the planet, on the surface of the planet, as well as underneath the planet, he said that back in the 90s, he said they were going to come online. Okay. Yeah. Now, when he uh, came back on, well, not that he ever left the lecture circuit, but in the 2000s, I want to say around uh, 2012, 2013, he said that these these particular volcanoes are now online. They're coming so online. The, pyramid, the pyramids too. They are online. Yeah. 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 Pyramids too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Then that's that's what I was trying to say. That that the pyramids are online and specifically um he was referring to the crystal pyramids that mm-hmm. are in the Atlantic Ocean and you mentioned that sis right mm-hmm. off the, the coast of Florida, because I think they're saying it's between Florida and them islands, Cuba and them. The um, Bermuda. Yeah, the Bermuda Triangle, because that's the reason why it's supposedly the Bermuda Triangle, because of those crystal pyramids. Um, and supposedly it was a fight for folks to control those crystal pyramids because whoever had control of the pyramids controlled the planet. So now let's think about that. If those crystal, and let's back up and even talk about what, what are those crystal pyramids? It is said that those crystal pyramids were, um, and it's, and it's just not those crystal pyramids on um, the Bermuda triangle. They're really all across the planet, okay? Uh, but specifically, everybody points to to the one in the um, Bermuda Triangle. I'm sorry, sis, did you have something you wanted to say? I said the ones in Mexico are coming online, too. Yes, yes. 
Yes. So those particular pyramid systems, especially the crystal pyramids that are hidden, um, and I don't even say they, they were hidden, they, they sunk. Those were the pyramids during the time of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. So meaning when this planet, and we're talking billions of years ago, when the planet was at a much higher vibration. Okay. So the technology that we see today, I mean, it's nothing compared to what, it was during that particular age, all right? So you can consider that like the golden age. So these crystal pyramids, it is said, also assisted very heavily in the vibration frequency of the planet. And so it, it shot the higher frequencies across the planet, and so, of course, the people that were inhabiting the planet got the benefits of the higher frequency vibration, and, and they resonated at a higher frequency vibration. So when Atlantis fell, that's when it is said the pyramids fell down um, in the bottom of the ocean, and some say this is when the land mass broke up um, as well. Okay, so that's where the concept comes into play that folks wanted to control those crystal pyramids because they knew as long as um, they had control of them, they were not going to be able to come back online to, ri uh, to raise the frequency of the planet because once the frequency rises the entities that are unable to cope with the higher frequencies, that's it for them. They, they will have to be gone. Um, so that's very interesting that we see these volcanoes um, heating up or being active across the planet. Now, very well could be Nibiru's solar system swinging into play, too. Um, changing the magnetic field, but I also believe because we're also we're on the energy grid because that's what Mama Earth is to me. It's, it's just an energy center, and even the ley lines are changing the frequency, and um, that to me will also contribute to these volcanoes. Uh, acting up, and I do believe that the pyramids across this planet are definitely back online. Yeah, I was watching a documentary about the um, pyramids, and they're all interconnected. They're all on the same ley line, straight across around, like a circle around the Earth. So, and so, you know, I think Wendell, you brought that up before. Uh, yep. You asked the question, "What are they for?" Mm -hmm. Right. Right, and it definitely wasn't no damn tune. No. Um, you know, that's the lie they told over in Egypt. Um, well, what they're telling over Egypt now, the, the fake Egyptologists, because they don't put the truth out, but that doesn't explain why are the other pyramids across the planet, because they definitely don't say that they were tuned even if we take Mexico, for example, or, or if we take Belize, they definitely don't say that they were tuned um, there. Uh, so very, very good point, sis. Very good point. Okay, I, family. I have, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Brother I would, Wendell. I would, I would have to ask the question, uh, what is the possibility that that network of uh, pyramids uh, have something to do with the control of these volcanoes. That's what that's what I was alluding to. I may have been long winded, but <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I really do believe that that it is. I mm -hmm. really, really yeah. do believe it. 
Yeah, you have to. You, yeah, you know, and and what brought that question on was uh, when we did the law book. I can remember uh, the second king tried to uh, get those volcanoes stirred up and, and erupted on their planet to protect their atmosphere. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. So Alma, because I think if I if I remember correctly, because you were saying trying to create their own chemtrail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what you said. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wow, wow, that makes sense. And for those of you that just joined us, I apologize. Um, we're still waiting on Brother Seven. Um, I tried to reach out to him, and I can't get through. On his number, I did hear from him about two hours ago, and he was all set to go. So something must have jumped off. I can't um, get through on his number. He is out of the country uh, in Costa Rica, and I literally just get a busy signal. So I tried to send a text. So hopefully he'll be able to join us. If not, we'll just um, continue on. But if you have something to contribute to the topic, uh, just press star one to get in the queue. Okay, yeah, I had forgot about that, Brother Wendell, that um, we talked about um, somebody trying to get those volcanoes going. Yeah. To, um, now, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, now, here lately, uh, I, I go and check out this brother uh, on YouTube. His channel is called Rap the News, and he watched things real close. And he's been... Mm-hmm. Uh, He's been documenting uh, what this, this this system in our solar system is doing, mm-hmm. uh, and he he posted a video a couple of days ago where so he gets up early in the morning and show you that there's another light source when the sun is coming mm-hmm. up and the moon is going down. Yeah. In this particular in this particular video, the sky was red, but it had black clouds. Now that's interesting. Yeah, and when the sunlight came on out, you could see white clouds and you could see black clouds. And I ain't talking about a uh, smoky gray. I'm talking about black like soot. And what he was saying is that system is on the bottom side of the earth. I'm trying to imagine now. <laughs> trying to get yeah, my. Well, I, well, I well, imagine well, the black the black cloud. I'm okay. I'm confused right, when just, you say the bottom side of the earth. Okay, just just picture in your mind that you have a flashlight on, and you put a tennis mm-hmm. ball above that flashlight. You're gonna see that light coming up from the bottom. That's what was happening. Oh. The light was coming up from the bottom, oh. and you could see, and you could see it was, it was red light, and the clouds were were jet black. Interesting. Very, very so interesting. So, so we we can't ignore what's going on out right there in space. We can't ignore that because mm-hmm. too many people are too many people are documenting this stuff. Yeah, we, you know, you know, I I saw some documentation. I may have been the same guy you were talking about, showing that the um, alien spa, the spacecraft, like the cigar shaped ones. Uh, mm-hmm. were using the eruption of the volcanoes to refuel. And that's possible. Yeah, they use that for energy. Yeah. And, I, and to be honest, I think those cigar-shaped ships, I think that's um, the different governments. I really, really do. I think that that's them. I think well, they I, already... I, I'm sorry, go ahead, sis. I saw one of them eat up the chemtrail. They had a video of them just destroying mm-hmm. the chemtrail. So I would think they were, uh, like you're saying, government, but then why would they eat up their own chemtrail? Yeah, yeah, and I haven't seen, and I've seen an orb eat up some chemtrails, but I haven't seen any of the spacecraft. So that's. And then they have them intercepting asteroids. They would decloak as about to destroy an asteroid, and then they recloak. Hmm. I mean, so they have, I, I, 
Mm-hmm. I've exactly. seen that video. I know what you're talking about. I've, I've seen that video. And and that's a cigar shape, and that's they said that's one of the the um, safety keepers of the planet because uh, that's what they do. They make sure asteroids don't hit the planet and destroy it, and they also get rid of those chemtrails that are government <laughs> and other governments are doing to destroy the planet. But see, I look at that as the whole thing with the chemtrails. I mean, those are holograms that they're putting up there. I mean, if everything is just a reflection of what's outside of us, I mean, and allegedly if there's a dome over the earth and can't up and get out, how is stuff mm-hmm. coming in? Yeah, that's that's what I I was thinking. Yeah. And as far as for the, as far as for the crystal pyramids, I mean, those would have to be the ultimate energy source because you know they mm-hmm. use diamonds to make lasers. I mean, right. all that could be tied into what they're trying to do with CERN. And crystals they make lasers out of. Oh, I didn't know they made them out of crystals, but that makes sense. You do, you mm-hmm. read the Dogon story? I mean, a diamond is a crystal. Yeah, they use, well, yeah, it's a different uh, configuration, I think. Right. But, yeah, the Dogons talked about they used crystals when they had that big war when they were escaping near planet here to Earth, and they said that they came with crystal lasers. That's so that was their story. Yeah, yeah, even... Uh, even uh, you remember even uh, Inky and then Lil them were using crystals. Mhm. They brought they brought they they brought crystals here. Right. And crystals tap into energy sources. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're a conductor. Um, mm-hmm. Of energy because they have their own. Um. Vibration, Anucci. right? No, okay. Energy themselves. So, you know, okay. it, it's it's interesting because I know that we talked about um, before how the planets themselves are energy centers, and um, we even talked about how there's videos out there on YouTube. All you really need to do is is go look at it that if you if it's folks that and I have to remind myself too to share a story with you all somebody doing their own little research on Facebook has some beautiful beautiful pictures Um, but folks are starting to take pictures of the sky themselves they're breaking out their own little equipment spending a little little bit bit of money on it zooming in on these planets and they are not seeing no balls. They're not seeing no round balls. They're literally seeing when you zoom in on it, this vibrating like um disc. And then if you <laughs> zoom in even more, you see an associated geometric shape to it. Which if like we talked about several times on, on this show all the of the geometric shapes translate into a certain vibratory frequency rate. Okay. So my little theory was now that again this is Rhonda's little one cent, just my opinion. I think that as uh Mama Earth, planet Earth is rising to a higher frequency and so will certain people also rise to the frequency with her and actually are assisting her rise as she is assisting us in rising our vibration frequency. So as um, this is going on, we are unlocking new energy centers. So we talked about those chakras uh, in our body, okay? 
So we are really unlocking additional chakras. And now this is just my two cents. It's going to seem far out to some, but I believe that equates to a lot of the new, what we're called planets that we're also, and suns that we're also seeing in the sky. And never a straight answer and crew, NASA and crew, they know that. And that's also why they are spending so much time, so much um, effort into blocking out things in the sky because that translates into the new energies that are within the people coming online to raise their vibration. Because once this planet gets to a certain vibration rate, that's a wrap for folks that operate on fourth dimension below. They will not be able to handle that particular frequency. So that's hey. what I believe is going on. I'm sorry. Go ahead on, Brother Wendell. They, they wasted their time. Listen here. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give y'all something to go look at. I'm gonna give y'all something to really go and look at. It's so look, there are guys y'all with a channel called Mud Fossil University. Mm-hmm. This guy is getting rocks that we say are rocks. Uh huh. And and he is proving that they are actually body parts of giants. Mm-hmm. Now, I ain't talking about no, I ain't talking about no little old bit of twenty, thirty foot giant. I'm talking about something that may be two miles tall. Mm-hmm. Two, two, three hundred feet. He, mm-hmm. He's no. I'm talking about what he is looking at. All right, let's take a mountain range, right? He has mm-hmm. shown mountain ranges that look like a woman laying on her back. Mhm. Now, now that what it really strikes you is he has a, a a clip on one of his videos of a cave. Mhm. This cave is a vulva. You can see the clitoris above the hole and all that. It's, it's a, um, go check it out. Okay. Okay, so now, I wrote now, that I'm gonna what, down. Now, now, now I'm going to tell you what this guy is doing. He's, he's taking these rocks, and he's cat scanning them. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they're coming up with human DNA. In. With the um, the tall folks, the, the fossil with the tall folks are also coming up with human DNA. This, all the rocks that he has been tested, he cat scanned them. They coming up with DNA, human DNA in. Mm-hmm. Go check it out. Okay. See, that's why that's why I say they waste their time because when those these rocks on this see this planet, the claim is this planet is made out of giants. Remember the book say in in those days there were giants. In mm-hmm. the earth, mm-hmm. I think we, uh, I think that guy, he's on to something, and he and he's verified a lot of what he's finding with with, with the book says too. That's interesting. Okay, I just uh, hold that thought, brother Wendell. Okay, I just um, heard from brother Seven. He should be jumping on pretty soon. We uh, got our times confused. It must. Just be the time that he was supposed to come on. So it's seven thirty his time <laughs> where he's at. So he should be with us shortly. Uh, he should be coming online. Okay, um, that's interesting. So I guess my point to you: Are you saying that, according to this guy? The giants were here first. I mean, what is he saying? 
What he's saying is this planet is made out of giants. This planet, this planet is made out of giants who, who got destroyed some kind of way. What do he mean made though? I'm slow tonight. Okay, okay. You, you, you have to, you, <laughs> the word you, in. You, I think it's in you, the earth. <laughs> You have, to, you, you, you have to go and watch it because I'm telling you, this guy, he has the background to do what he's doing, and he's he, he gone to the scientists and everybody, and they will not deal with him because they, they don't know anything about what he's doing, but he can explain it because, like I said, he's taking all of his samples and cat scanning them. Giant and, proving, and, and proving his point. He's showing you how a ligament is made, then he'll take you out here and show you a mountain or a or, or rock or whatever it is, and it's made exactly mm-hmm. like that. Wow. Okay, j- hold on a second, Brother Wendell. This may be Brother um, Seven. I see a restricted. I'm not sure. Let me hold on. Let me ask him if he's online because I don't want to open somebody's line and that's not him. Yes, it's showing up as restricted. So, okay, okay. Um, they better set up. They better. They better set up twenty dollars so they can take that restriction off. <laughs> no, that's um, that's <laughs> ghetto pre-conference call. So it it may just be because he's um, calling from another country. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I'm just trying to make sure yeah. if. Not, I may have to open that person's line and now, now, let me, let me, apologize in advance. Mm-hmm. Let me show you something else you can't find. He found two rocks that were uh, maybe a little bit smaller than the uh, the uh, them, them heads they found, the old make head. Mm-hmm. These rocks. Were reptilian head. It had the scales all of it, everything. But they rocks. They petrified. But you could see the scales plain as day. Y'all well, that was, can, yeah, y'all I'm gonna check, check that check video it. out. I'm gonna check it out, and we're gonna come back, and I'm gonna talk about that next week because I need to get a visual on what dude is saying. So I think this is uh, brother seven coming on. Um, he's, his number is showing up as restricted, so. Um, I am going to bring him on, so just bear with me here. Greetings, brother. Holness, is, is, uh, am I coming through? Yes, you're coming through. Your number oh, is, wow, is okay. showing up as restricted. That's why I wasn't yeah, for not, sure it, if that was you. Yeah, it's not supposed to be. I know I have the caller ID on, but maybe Blog Talk is picking it up. You know, crazy. But wow, yeah, it's great to be on the line. I I know that also there seem to be some time differences. And uh, yeah, I just noticed that because we, there's no daylight savings time, blah, 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 blah. And then that means that it's like one hour off. So, okay, you know, and, and you see, I okay. just I just emailed you earlier because I was on point. I'm waiting, but I'm thinking, OK, I got a little bit. I got one more no, hour. No, I apologize because <laughs> I'm like, we last time right. we didn't have a mix up in time. So um I apologize for that, but that's okay. We're glad that you're here. How are you? Oh, I'm doing exceptionally well. I'm doing exceptionally well. It's uh it's an amazing time we're living in. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I am so glad. I want to thank you uh for coming back and joining us. I know it's been a little bit over a year and um we just had such a great time with you. You dropped a lot of good information uh, as usual. And um, when I was doing the promo for the show this week, people were really excited. I mean, people that normally don't really keep up on week to week what we're doing, they're like, oh, he's I'm like, yeah, he's coming on. So I want to thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule for joining us. So um, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. I know we talked 
briefly, and I wanted to leave it open to discuss whatever you wanted uh, to discuss. I, um, of course, I always check what you are doing on a periodic basis, and it, it really looks like that um, you have a lot of classes going on with university, uh, and as well as um, you have a wealth of information on secretenergy.com. Um, so I'll turn the floor over to you, and we'll take it from there. Well, first of all, I wanted to say thanks for definitely having me back on the show. It's uh, it's always a pleasure to come on, and we had a really amazing time last time. So I was just like, man, I got to get back in there and <laughs> and uh, and do some things. And uh, yeah, I was actually listening earlier, and and uh, it would really be good to to just go with this. I mean, there's obviously um, there's some stuff that I'm working with now. You know, it's just as far as obviously I'm going to continue to progress. And then there's, you know, what's going on in the reality on the normal. And, you know, there's always insights for that. And then there's that custom message, which is really catered to the night and to those that are listening. So we just dive through all of those worlds and see, you know, what we can come up with. And, you know, and and first and foremost, you know, another thing that I would like to say is, uh, yeah, I mean, it's great if it's a dialogue, because if you hear some of this stuff and it's really clicking with what you're talking with, with what you know, and you want to know a little bit more about that, then it's really easy to get that information to you. As you know that there's really nothing Mm -hmm. that I can't demystify. So this is always a good time for us because we get a chance to pull out our notes, if you may, of of things that we've still had in question. And then we get a chance to ask, ask those questions. So I would also, you know, if possible, want to leave some time open for those who want to call in and ask some things, um, and just so that they have that opportunity, because I'm really not doing that many shows these days because I've been v- busy on a few inventions. And right. uh, so, yeah, that's taking up a lot of my time. So it's really good to to actually get into these forums and assist the, the people. And uh, I guess I can start off with I remember the brother's name. Was it Wade or I, I remember the brother's name that you always used to, you know, it's kind of like your co-host over there. Oh, heard brother him earlier. Wendell. Yeah, that, that's mm-hmm. him. Wendell, that's what it is. <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, you know, I just, yeah, I was listening to him, you know, he always got something he's up to, and I wanted to, you know, see, and, and assist him with his, you know, current research of, you know, watching this, this whole unearthing of, of these much more larger life uh, human beings, and it, it's really uh, something that we have to, to understand as far as that nothing that's here d- does not have an order or a process that is gone through to come into a creation, in fact, that's actually right. the whole purpose of creation is to have some kind of like structure of how you say it started and then how it's to continue. But on the other side of this, there's none of that. There's no numbers. There's no, uh, uh, you know, any kind of separations or divisions or languages. There's none of that. So with this organized reality, this is, is supposedly the, the realm that was built by God. And so some people already set out not too long ago to really understand how did God, quote unquote, build this world. And a lot was really, really come up with. And of course, those annuals of knowledge were closed. But just to understand the primordial times, which is really uh, rife in the occultism, if you, you know, if you have the opportunity to read through some of that stuff. But what it talks about is is that there was basically a covenant between uh, rather large life forms that they call macrobes. And the template of these, uh, these life forms could very well be close to human beings. And this is because it gets to a point where our, our apex human being, the, basically the, the, the consciousness that we're in now currently, mm-hmm. it actually is uh, what we would call a template of a, a being that is, I would say, perfected. And perfected in the sense that it has a mas- it has a level of mastery with it, so it can master other beings. So this first uh, life forms, if you may, what you will see is that their structures were much more larger, and that's why in the ancient text it talks about how they split Tiamat's body and created the earth with it, and you know, so they give a lot of hints that the the possible foundation to what we're standing on is in fact a life form. Now, when you do look into any kind of levels of, of uh, esoteric knowledge, it does reveal this. And not only that, the let's say the rocks or the strata are the bones of humans, but see, that's just in this timeline, because when you're not dealing with time, you will go on to a whole other level and find that that 
substance would actually be alive. It would be animated. It would be thinking, and, and, and it would be able to move with its own volition. So even the planet, the, the surface that we're standing on now, which some people call Mother Earth or we call Mother Earth, is actually alive because you can't get anything living from something dead. So if we put some seeds in the ground and the ground was dead, then it's not going to come up. So when we put seeds in this ground, obviously, and there's different kinds of seeds, there's ideas, there's uh, fruit, there's children, there's different kinds of seeds. When we put seeds into mm-hmm. this fertile field, it does bring life to those seeds and they start their grow up process. And so sometimes when you want to kind of blame the, the catastrophe that's going on sometimes on earth, you can just blame it on that. This is the actual growing up process. And also that if you're looking in here, when this is still, let's say the sixth or excuse me, the third, the, the, the second trimester, like very early in the whole process, or even in the middle of the process, you're going to see some <laughs> deformities. You're going to see some things that you don't perceive as actually being perfect. And, of course, you're going to be witnessing those things in yourself. And so this is a part of the, the massive uh, – uh, it's not a plan. It's more like our firmware, I meaning it's just what we are. There's nothing that we can do necessary to change it or take away from it, et cetera. It's the natural process of our growth. Now, obviously, there, when you get a sentient world like this where literally you have thinking beings – we can now prolong that process for ourselves with the advent of something called time, which we have not been familiar with in our previous phase because our previous phase doesn't exist in time. So this whole idea of time actually does create a form of scarcity. And now let me show you just what what is meant by these ancient texts about these larger life forms, also sometimes called the archons, sometimes even called the angels. But the mm-hmm. Ark of, uh, of the Covenant is basically a covenant of, in the sky that, I mean, a covenant that was uh, to bear witness by a symbol in the sky known as the rainbow. And when you go in physics and you go in these, these different, uh, these arts, you'll find that actually this color correspond to the fields of division, that this is a very divisive world, meaning it runs on duality. So there's the greens, there's the orange, mm-hmm. there's the black, there's the white. There's these different colors that are not like each other, supposedly, as it's perceived in the physical realm. Now, again, before all of this, there is no separation. There is no feeling that there's something different or that one is missing Mm -hmm. something, that one is going to die. There's none of that kind of stuff going on. So in this space where division is created, you could imagine all of, not most, but all of the, the difficulties that we seem to face in the physical reality is actually because of those differences because of that division. Now, when you look mm-hmm. at the reality, you can also see that the reality powers itself on electricity. And when you study electricity, you actually find that the electrons and electricity are actually negative and that they are moving under the pressure of the voltage. So what this literally means is, is that in the physical reality, you have a lot of negative electrons. This is uh, what we would see as the, the, the feminine force of flesh. You'll have a lot of that mm-hmm. going on and then there'll be this chaos kind of, which is the friction or the force. They call this the, the pressure that actually mm-hmm. creates energy. And that's actually in our conflicts and our dislikes with everything that we're judging on the dimension. So this is why the book says, when you judge, ye shall be judged. Because then what happens is when you judge, you activate what is a, a part of the consciousness. They call it the R complex, which is a rather primal part of our consciousness. It's actually assigned to the actual reptilian side of us, since the whole human is basically a stack of multiple life forms, and one of those life forms being reptilian who moves on one strand of DNA. So these are the primordial forms. Now, this is why there's, of course, a lot of serpent hating going on all the time. To say every serpent's evil is just as bad as saying every, serpent, uh, every human is good. What I'm saying is, mm-hmm. is that instead of good and bad, which is that whole binary code, we should seek right. to understand it. Like, go observe, let's, let's look at what we're talking about here. And if we take a moment to do that, we'll find that symbolically and also physically and metaphysically, et cetera, this serpent makes up the foundation or the primal senses of what came before the reality that we're standing on right now, right? But it's still a collected chain or a bridge. And this is why the mm-hmm. rainbow, they call it a rainbow bridge, or it even looks like a bridge, and bridges are even shaped like rainbows. And this is all because the symbolism is always encoded 
within the geometry. The symbolism is always encoded within the language. The symbolism is really what is, is the code behind uh, the, the, uh, the reality itself. If you pulled this, this covering back and just looked at it, it would be all just geometric codes. Mm-hmm. And in that geometry, you would find the meaning. So what happened was, you know, to, to make a, a rather long story, we're talking about billions of years, possibly short, mm-hmm. is that there was an agreement for this covenant to be put together to do the thing. And that's exactly <laughs> how it was mentioned, even in the Bible, meaning to create mm-hmm. a man or woman. So basically mm-hmm. this process involves actually taking the life forms that are already naturally developing on the dimensions and actually blending them with the, the top gene, which is basically the gene of reason, as they call it. And, and this is also even known as the reptilian's brain. So in the ancient text it said, we gave them our minds. Now, of course, <laughs> this mind which is also a cognate of, of, of mind, like the deep minds that you're digging in. This mind or mind can be tricky because if you get in your mind and then you start believing that you're this character in the mirror and you start going deeper into these experiences that are still actually a part of an illusion in the sense that it's made out of light. So mm-hmm. we're not an illusion that it's not real. It's an illusion that it's made out of light. So this illusion that we begin to live in creates all of these divisions which become like walls in the maze of our mind. So then this can go on for almost infinitely because what happens when a person goes through the process of what they perceive as death, Mm -hmm. they actually then have an opportunity at that point to dive back in on another part of their whole memory-based timeline. So most of the time people have these things that they regret or they have these things that they, they uh, want to do over again or they forget or they, they long to be a part of again. So mm-hmm. in this reflection, which is literally what it is, in this reflection, the person will literally dive back into that space in their whole incarnations and then start living from there. Very similar to how when you go to sleep, sometimes you can have dreams that you're fully convinced that this dream is re- real until you wake up. So this process has actually been going on. There is no actual time to measure it, uh, how long the process of incarnations have been going on. But what's been mm-hmm. very difficult for, uh, for uh, many of these myst- mystics and also the spiritual uh, uh, centers of the world and religious centers is to actually determine where, where we are actually supposed to be and how to not just theorize that, but prove that based on a blueprint. So let me give you an example. For instance, with the sun... Mm-hmm. Now, if you notice that what we're talking about is we're talking about a solar body that is actually spiraling through what they're calling space at billions of miles an hour. Who knows? Mm-hmm. So if you make that centralized to you, what this would mean is, is that you have this ability to spiral through the whatever this is they're calling space, which is basically black matter or my at. Right. And every single point that you come in contact with, you experience the height of experience. So it just basically comes across as pure energy. It doesn't come across as, okay, this is the time I sat with my child on the swing. This is not the time that I, I won the lottery. This is, it's not going to come across as that because that's all dense. That's dense stuff. But mm-hmm. what actually happens is in that, in that process or in that experience, when you're at the point, that's why they say, are you on point? You know, are you focused? <laughs> all these words mean the same thing. It means are you basically on the tip of the, of the sun as yourself being the sun going through your manifestations. Remember the sun is neither male nor female. That's a trick in the language. It's a dynamo. Mm-hmm. So it has a positive a negative and a neutral. So that means that the human being must achieve a positive and negative and neutral before they can even get to this, what we would call our higher selves or higher state. But it doesn't mean again that it, because we're not there, that it does not exist. It does not need us to feel like we exist for it to exist. Meaning so we, we don't need to feel like we exist to exist. We just are. You notice how some people try to actually confirm their existence with their feelings? This is very <laughs> deep. This is much more deeper than that. This is something that can't actually be undone and moved around and thought about. So that's also our power then because we can become disempowered when we start to take on this rudimentary knowledge, which they call foolishness to God. But it was basically the serpent's knowledge, and the serpent's knowledge was the knowledge about everything under the sun, everything in the world. 
This includes the physics. This includes what they call the higher levels of the knowledge here. All of that mm-hmm. was serpent knowledge because there's a symbolic to the serpent, as they call serpent. Now, the pent in the back, it means a pentagram. And now mm-hmm. the pentagram actually becomes the symbol in Wicca, and, but much more older languages of some kind of wisdom that was on earth. Now, the symbol then turns itself into an apple because when you cut an apple in half, mm-hmm. it actually has a pentagram in the center. Go check it out. So what the, pent- what the bitten apple is, because the whole part in Genesis is all encrypted, the bitten apple is actually biting into the knowledge of the serpent. Notice how the serpent then mm-hmm. brings the knowledge. But the serpent's always been also a cognate of wisdom, a cognate of books a cognate of trees, a cognate of uh, uh, words also, and then also this fervorance to teach the human beings, the mammals, language, because the serpent doesn't actually have a voice box, even as you see them right now, but humans have this voice box, and because of our voice box, we're capable of an evocation, meaning saying things that create powerful things because we Mm -hmm. have the ability to push sound. So this is kind of like this uh, love-hate relationship that also goes on between the older, old schoolers, which they would call, let's say, the ancient ones, who they say mm-hmm. are dead but dreaming. Now, the reason why they're saying it's like that is just like Wendell is saying about how these, these uh, giants, what they are is they're so dense, meaning that their frequencies now are so low that they actually appear like stone. And in, in, in the event you happen to open up your third eye, in front mm-hmm. of many of these little fragments and stones, you will not only see many of these primordial forms, you will also see some of the larger ones that are still alive, like what Earth actually consists of. So in the ancient text, what it mentions is, is that they would call them the thick stars, and they were also cognates of the trees. Now, what this means is, is that the trees, these huge trees, were actually the pillars, if you may, or the actual, uh, let's say, origin point of the human beings coming to the planet. And this is because these trees, if you notice, that even with ayahuasca and these kind of elements, they contain vast amounts of data within, encrusted in, 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 in within their, their bark and in their, in their mm-hmm. chlorophyll, photosynthesis, in their roots, mm-hmm. etc. So this is a living life form that actually has a connection to us. And there's actually an article on the Secret Energy site of somebody in, in Romania or one of those countries going through a, uh, not just a theory, but basically proving that many of the larger mountain ranges, if you take a look at them, actually look like stumps of trees. And then it kind of begs the question, did someone cut these trees down? Now, if you look also in these ancient texts, it talks about, especially in the Norse tradition, of their tree being cut down, right? And like there's being like that every single group here on Earth, let's say the races, which are the seven colors and then the two, the two other colors, uh, black and white. So these mm-hmm. nine colors, let's say, that each of them had as their pillar a specific tree. And if you happen to cut someone's tree down, it, they felt like they were disconnected from their mother or disconnected from their source, as if mm-hmm. someone had cut their umbilical cord. Now, what it does prove in these ancient texts, and again, this is ancient texts are ways that we can try to use English to interpret what's happening on an entirely different level. True, mm-hmm. as above, so below, but in the as above sense, this doesn't play out like, big giant rock trees somebody comes and cuts the orm down which is what it was called then the bloodline of the emir no longer has consciousness and ravages the earth so you could then take this to the story and say okay well if you look at the bloodline of the emir and where they came from are those people ravaging the earth now because they're disconnected from their motherland and then if you go to even a place like russia and you see how even the women are treated then you may say, well, do these people have some kind of disconnection between themselves and their mother? So this is, this is like the whole process, right? So what happens with Earth, though, because this is what we have to get beyond or we get an opportunity to, is getting out of Wonderland. Because truly what you're also dealing with, if you understood the profile of the Archons, is that they were actually sorcerers. They were pulling power from the source, which was light. And then they became, which is, you know, there was the Anunnaki, but the current term is Lucifers, where there was more Mm -hmm. than one. One who can use light 
and bend light and shape and form and fashion with light in order to create illusion. So what this mm-hmm. does then is like why they hide most of the, the initiation process within the movie uh, um, Alice in Wonderland, where the first process is Alice dives into the looking glass. And this, of mm-hmm. course, comes out to us on the planet as when we look at this mirror and we start imagining that we're the being that's inside that mirror, that's the first part of getting into Wonderland. Because wow. from that point on, you're going to wonder who you are and you're going to know in, in a tense that you're something else, but you're going to seek everywhere else but inside because it mm-hmm. first starts right there in the mirror. And this is what the Toltec knowledge teaches about that this mirror actually that's in your bathroom, it, 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 it pulls in versus the city and mirrors that the ancients used to use, it pushes out. And the, well, excuse me, it attracts or repels. Okay, so the one, the, let me, I, have to, I have to correct that. I need to think about that. But just let me just say it like this. One attracts and the other one repels. And the difference in the one and the other is one is basically casting a projection on you, saying this is what you are, while the other one is saying what are you. And the deeper, the deeper you can go inside of yourself, and that's the obsidian mirror, the closer you can get to the realization of who you truly are. So until then... Alice looks in this mirror every single morning. Now, let me also tell you why the serpent also is used as a symbolism in alchemy, because the skin of the human body is known to be the cognate of the serpent because the skin constantly sheds on the serpent. And so, too, the attitudes and the auras of people constantly change. In addition to that, the skin is actually what's causing the biggest race problem, right? Like, because that's mm-hmm. after all, if I came in with no skin on, you wouldn't even know who I was, let alone mm-hmm. if even if I was your friend, let alone try to distinguish whether I was Chinese, black or whatever. So the right. reason why that's always known to be the greatest secret is because the skin is an organ. The organs are the archons and the skin has sheathed all of them, meaning that the heart, the lung, all these other forms or organs vibrations that are inside of us are all summed up with this outside so let me explain how that works people when they look in the mirror they're more concerned about their appearance than they are about their liver (laughs) and they are about their their uh their spleen and these different things they will go and do murder to the spleen but when it comes time to fix the face they're always there in the mirror fixing it why because the outside surface surface of the skin is actually known as the the rainbow serpent Okay, Mm -hmm. and then that rainbow is shimmering, meaning that it changes colors. This is how the ancients put it. And then based on that, then the person gathers their attitude, gather even people get into all of this stuff that you're seeing right now is all because of this skin. And thus it became a cognate of the illusion. You see what I mean? And the illusion is Mm worked by light. And if you see human beings, because we think that we don't even shine, but we shine. We don't actually need an external light. That was known as falsophorus or the false one or Lucifer. We will be then blinded by that external light. That's why most uh, religions now are external solar god religions, right? And mm-hmm. they're always sun god, young god, and his youth, and blah, 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 blah. And they, they sell that because that's the blinding by the light of the truth. The truth is, is first of all, it's not a man and it's not a woman. What we're talking mm-hmm. about is what's behind the eyes of a man and a woman. We're talking about the essence of even, uh, they got a female woman, but they also got a female lion. They got a female frog. So what is female? It's not human as we know it. It's actually a force. So this is, you know, some of the stuff, this is kind of old stuff. Like where I'm at right now is I've seen now that there's another play that was just that was made, and this all goes as supplemental programming when you're younger all the way to the age you are right now. And that's because mm-hmm. nature's complexity, because we don't really study nature. Like, when we say we, first of all, that would mean a larger amount of a large amount of people. Like there's right. people who study biology and things like that, but that is nowhere near the majority. So what I'm talking about is is that when we study nature, and let me just take a moment, just a quick moment here, just to take a break out. I know. Somebody may have something to say. Let me just take a moment for a minute. <laughs> it's okay, go ahead. <laughs> Let me just take oh, yeah, a quick I found, drink. <laughs> I found it interesting about the whole thing with chopping down the tree. 
and to bring mm-hmm. it into more present times, like how they say George Washington chopped down the cherry tree. That's exactly mm-hmm. what I thought of. Mm-hmm. That's well, and it also point. says that, that they will be cut off. And that's like when you, I mean, there's deeper books. I mean, I'm just only bringing in what I've read and what I've understood as wisdom. But there was one book that read, you know, I'm not going to try to ignite a race war on this show tonight. So I'll leave the colors for everyone else to guess. But they said, basically, bring me the bones of their father. And then the response was, but you cannot because we made the dogs eat them. The dogs ate their bones. So what this is saying basically is that some people even had the unfortunate history of having their ancestors' bones eaten by dogs in order for them to not actually feel the connection of that vibrational wavelength. Okay, so now let's talk about this vibrational wavelength. Yeah, so what that's happens? Where I want to go. So, yeah, so that's where we were going. So what happens is, is in nature. See what hap- Because we don't study nature, nature. Nature is baffling us right now, right? So we see it and we're like, man, whatever this is made out of. I mean, it's just naturally all inspiring. Okay, so mm-hmm. because of that, though, we immediately go into this assumption that nature is perfect, that nature is the highest level of knowledge, and we go on and on and on. This actually goes without us really thinking about it. It's subconscious. But actually what was discovered, you know, whether a person was to believe it or not, is that when you get deep into like the micro, when you could just see under your microscope and you start looking deep into many organisms, you actually see flaws in the pattern. And what they basically discovered is these flaws are creating what is called a decay, a, a, a more, a faster decay cycle. And what this means is that obviously every flower that you see does eventually get dead, right? But, or, or wilt, mm-hmm. right? And some right. trees live longer than others. Some animals live longer than others. Some humans even live a little bit longer than others, right? So what mm-hmm. controls this sliding scale of decay? It's actually the, the pattern that's deep within the material of the being. So it turns out that there's this pattern, these patterns that we all have, that have been corrupted in many ways, that the pattern is not as perfect as it used to be. So what happens is this is what causes this idea that we're actually aging. Now, of course, there's a slew of things, mainly imagining we're something that we're not, that actually Mm -hmm. makes this pattern start coming out of its perfected form. But you can see how the entire process of being in the world in the stage that it's in right now is almost productive for a person to become disconnected from themselves. So what this pattern really does for me to demystify it is to understand this ban- bandwidth. Basically, this pattern is an antenna. So how mm-hmm. bandwidth works is that if you call your mother and she's got bad internet, it doesn't matter how good your internet is, it's still going to cut the line off. You both must have good enough internet to have a conversation. And the better internet you have, you can either start shooting videos and everything down it, right? Exactly. So the mm-hmm. same thing is with the connection between us and what we're calling our oversoul, which is the complete lineage and line of who we are. The bandwidth on that side is always going to be very high, but to us, it's now become very low because not only our pattern is distorted, we're disillusioned with who we truly are. And so in the event, that we begin to perfect our own pattern by tapping back into the all-knowing, not believing, mm-hmm. but the all-knowing. Knowing. Mm-hmm. Then one starts opening the bandwidth back up to their self. And this is how I came to not only know, but also experience this wisdom that I'm talking about right now. I'm not talking about this from the realm of belief. I know this because I have experiences and I keep having the experiences. I'm even able to call experiences and phenomena on cue because I see mm-hmm. how, you know, you also kind of wrote me and say, hey, man, you know, look like you didn't, you didn't got on this TV show. So then we're watching a <laughs> doppelganger, which is basically a, 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 a three-dimensional projection and emission. I'm not saying he's not moving on his own volition, meaning that he's not moving on his own prime. But what I'm saying mm-hmm. is it's a prototype meaning that there's a prototype, if you notice, of certain human beings, almost all of them. You can even get one look like your grandma. You can get one that looks like. Mm -hmm. So there's an actual template to the mixtures of the human beings. But because you still do have a rather rich palette to mix from, this is why still you can get billions of humans and still not see how some of them actually look alike. But every now and then you bump into an Indian version of a Mexican. Now, the thing Mm -hmm. is also is to realize that this 
connection between the pentagram is also the connection between phi. And what phi is basically random numbers that continue to go on infinitely. So instead of talking about mathematics, all a person needs to understand is that this thing can continuously spit out these numbers. And if these numbers, let's say, were assigned to the uniqueness or the appearance of uniqueness that comes from each being, you will always mm-hmm. find the small variations within each, within each being. And as long as you're doing a lot of judging, you're going to see a huge difference. But as soon as you don't do much judging, you start throttling that energy back and also putting that energy into yourself when you're realizing that all is self, then you start seeing this unifying field that actually becomes your instructor because it then starts the process that must go on before one can depart from a binary world into trinary is they must unify their own field. Now, the unification of the field is in this realm, impossible because this is a dualistic world. So this Mm. means that once you do it, you actually don't live in this world as people call living. Now, let me explain this. So there's this place that's actually where the supreme always is, and it's in between the breath. It's actually called present. It doesn't exist in the past. It doesn't exist in the future. It's right in the moment because all in that moment, there's an infinite amount of energy. So this is where it always stays. And things that are behind us, like the past, memories, all that appears like slow motion if we ever take the time to look at it. And then as far as what's beyond, we're experiencing that in the moment, so there's nothing to look forward to. So this is the supreme state of the consciousness in which we can reach, and it can actually be done from physical body on up. Well, one of the major keys, again, to just simplify this for people is, and not people, but these beautiful beings that are on the planet simplified mm-hmm. it's because we need to see only our focus, which is sovereignty. When you find yourself doing something without a purpose, like sovereignty, it's going to feel like time is wearing on you. Many things are going to feel pointless, et cetera, et cetera. You must keep sovereignty at your point because if you can achieve and you can even small, small portions of sovereignty, making your way towards that, as below, so above. You will cause that phenomenon to also take place in what they call the heavens. Now, in the heavens, that place is basically, a, a, that's why they have different heavens all the way up to the seventh heaven, right? Because it's right. the same thing as the seven colors on the rainbow, where the astral right. plane is also laid out. Because this space between when a human goes from a dense body, human being, then they die, they mm-hmm. go into another space for a while until they take on the vessel again, or another vessel again. So in that space, of what goes on between that part, that's what's called the astral plane. Now, these astral planes are equally as divided. Now, because anything that you've got to see a differentiation between something, this is why someone says, oh, well, you know, I went there, and it was this color, and there was this kind of beings going on there, and then on the eighth heaven I got there. And even the Bible lays it out, the Chiyah Hakwadash, the, uh, the, the creatures around the throne, the Bini Elohim, it, le- it, le- it shows you the, se- the seraphim, the cherubim. It shows you these layers that they have actually set up in the astral plane beyond the non-physical that still consist of this kind of division. Now, this is called metatronics. Okay? Metatronics, which is what is really being practiced the most uh, by these uh, what they call them Orthodox Jews because they worship math. Okay? Really, math is mayat. Okay, but they're worshiping the synthetic, what they call the black, the, the black artificial goo. They're worshiping the synthetic version of my app through numbers. Okay, now numbers mm-hmm. obviously are the only thing precise. That's why they say God is numbers, and obviously the ancient cultures had a strong fix on numbers. So this uh, language, which is the the ancient Hebrew, because the letters are numbers, as the modern Hebrew is now, the entire language is numbers. Now the the whole thing about this is is that. There's the gift within it, and then there's the curse. Now, the curse is what they are suffering from. I'm not generalizing, but I'm saying that whole Mm -hmm. focus on banking and finance and God as a number and money and more numbers, higher numbers, one billion, two billion, your your age is older, you have more degrees, higher temperature. So all these different let's play the numbers game is all a product of the curse of what was taken out of that pyramid. Okay, now when they say, okay, they took something from the pyramid or they just spoiled the Nisut Bitti, which they're calling pharaohs, is that they took the numbers. They took the mathematical encodings, not just the, the gold that was there, but the actual architecture. 
of what was actually taken because when you have the architecture, phi is encoded within the pyramid. So now you know how God, quote unquote, built the world. Mm-hmm. And now this is like in a cartoon movie when they say, don't let the, 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 the power fall into the hands of evil. What they're saying right. is basically when the abomination that sets, causes desolation, this is when the creature walks into the holies of holies. Now, let me tell you, this is not just a specific race. This is happening also microcosmically with each person walking into the sacred parts of their own consciousness or their own physicality even and then misusing it. Okay, mm-hmm. so the abomination that causes desolation is basically what starts kicking the clock in that whole degradation cycle. And then now we're showing it. It's disconnection. Numbers create disconnection. One, two, three, four, five. Even words create disconnection. That's a sword, not a cat. This is an a, a, a airplane, not a boat. So all of those words, they cut into the reality like swords, bringing out to you what it is that you evoked. And all of this begins to happen so fast, it seems to almost get out of control if you're moving slow. And this is the whole process of being in dense worlds. When you get off of the tip of the sun where you're forever young, there Mm -hmm. is no possession. Nothing can hold you. You're vibrating so high, nothing can cling to you. Experiencing it all in the moment is pure energy. The only thing that's actually behind you, which they call stardust. That's why somebody say, eat my dust, and they peel off on you. (laughs) That dust is actually the planet. It's all of the memories. It's everything that you ex- you, you've you experienced now slowed down. So this is why in the world, the reincarnation process is basically a person reflects, looks back on time. This is where I would rather be. And because they're in a body that can move through time, let's prove real quick that the astral body, if you want to call it that, the dream body mm-hmm. – is mm-hmm. capable of moving through time. This is why you can have a 15-minute, you just went to sleep on the couch real quick, and that seemed like four or five hours. Right. You can go and travel somewhere across the world right in just a moment because that body specifically, it doesn't obey the laws of time. So when you're in that body and you now come out because the physical, <laughs> the physical body has convinced itself it's going to die because it's artificial, and let me explain to you why the bodies are artificial, because, because you know, what we do on the show, we go deep. Right. So the body basically is what's known as an egregor. It's basically when there's a ritual done around something and the belief in it becomes so strong that it actually starts to solidify <laughs> itself. Now, this is why, of course, when these people that are practicing, practicing exoteric knowledge, not esoteric, they try to draw the star on the ground and go marching around that. And they, you see, mm-hmm. knowledge in the hand of fool. What it's referring to is that the physical body is actually the pentagram itself. It's phi. And the ritual is keeping us in a conti- continuous cycle with ourselves. Now, notice the word psycho, crazy, mm-hmm. and cycle to go in circles because eventually that is actually what they say the definition of insanity is, is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So if you come back to the world over and over and over again, thinking Mm -hmm. that you're going to hit unity, hit happiness or hit any of that, that's kind of insane. But of course the world (laughs) promotes this kind of insanity. Now I'm not saying go check out. Everyone has their orbit. The only thing actually guaranteed here is that you'll leave. The, the real test is, if you may, because you're in a university or a universe, right? A universe, mm-hmm. every time, the only purpose is every time you say that you've, you're going, you accomplish something, okay, well, here's the test. So if you say, okay, well, now I, I know how to, what happens after death, so I'm a professional reincarnator. Okay, well, here's the test. Let's see if you cling. And this is why also if, when a person gets on certain substances that will take you up through a couple levels of your own frequency, the person mm-hmm. wants to get back to earth fast. They're like, yo, this is too much energy. Now, the interesting thing is, though, is that the first thing that is proven is that there is no lack of energy. And that's a part of the mm-hmm. falsehood in this realm is that there's yep. some kind of a lack in energy based on time, based on oil, based on money, because it all just it, it's a slippery slope. It just starts all rolling into each other after that. So but on the true level of things, actually, the real issue is being able to handle that amount of energy and still remain present, what they call conscious. Right. And what mm-hmm. I found is that's actually why you see so many human beings on the planet right now is because they are actually one. And it takes 
all of these beings in order to be able to manage like a spaceship all of the energy that's moving through earth and in the event that we start getting off balance and offline then we already start triggering certain fail safes within ourselves like alarm clocks literally like wake up you need to wake up it's like a freddy krueger movie here now like your whole mm-hmm. pod has been on autopilot for too long you've coasted into hostile space wake up out the dream and grab the helm of the ship now let's talk about the ship really briefly so this is how it was like when you're coasting through the galactic ocean I'll take a break here in just a moment. When you're coasting through the galactic ocean, this is how it works. All cognates of the word of a navigator or the sailor have to do with the first angel or androgynin that visited the planet that kicked a part of this process off, which they call Simyaz. Okay? Now, Simyaz Mm -hmm. is known as the sailor and is often often depicted as an angel of a a reptilian-looking angel. That's the pictures. So generally, if you see in the sky right now, everything is actually in this motion, right? And it's few things are out of that motion. The only things that are out of that motion are what's called falling stars, right? Mm -hmm. Meteors, those kind of things. Everything else is going always going around this whole motion and then come back around in one annu or one cycle. Mm -hmm. The reason this is, is the same reason why if you are a real navigator, when you get on the ocean, you never have to open your sails or excuse me, you never have to engage your oars. All you have to do is open your sails because you already know when the wind is coming and where it's going. So you're a sailor. So you know, okay, I'm going to open up on on August 15th of 2022. I open up the sail from this port right here, and there's a wind that will take me around the entire world without me ever engaging my oar and without the sea ever being rough. Okay, that's a real sailor knows how to do that. So the Mm -hmm. purpose of this is this is why in the book it says there's a time and place for everything, because as you're going through these 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 uh, constellations, which are also the zodiac or the different kind of energies that you will encounter, then each of these energies can be used for something. So sometimes sometimes it's time to take a break and to relax and have fun. Sometimes it's time to work real hard and conceive ideas. Sometimes it's time to go spend time with the family. So there's a time and a place for everything. So the navigator knows that. So the navigator's never in a rush to try to get somewhere, feeling like they're late, feeling like they ain't going to make it, feeling like they're going to – none of that happens because they're cool about it and they're just sailing on the galactic ocean or cosmos, and then they're going through the experiences as they come. That's what the ancestors was trying to teach us with all this methunether and all of these different works. And that's what they actually try to exclaim until the exoteric people come and try to make the external version of it. And the truth is the reason why there was always a fervorance to teach someone this. There was never like, oh, you know, maybe you can learn it. We got to see if you're worthy. No, it was to mm-hmm. let you discover your uniqueness. Because when you discovered your uniqueness, now we were going to have a piece that we were missing. Because the entire realm that we're living in is basically like an explosion. It's actually the remains of what is what went on after a conflict. Now, you can see that conflict on a lower level or you can say there was an internal conflict where you started going to war with yourself and then you exploded. And now you're trying to gather all your pieces back together. But because of this disconnection, these pieces, just like the electrons in a battery, don't want to be put back together. They're trying to get away from each other. And this is also in magnetics, why the two poles that are alike are trying to push away from each other. So you see, this whole thing is really encoded. It's like looking at some kind of mystical, magical box. And Mm -hmm. what we are doing now and have done is we are making our way out of that box. Instead of us being conscribed to the mind where we have to dig mm-hmm. the gold of the archons, meaning that we have to bring our bright, fo- our bright ideas and forms from our deeper minds and consciousness. This is our past, our memories. You know how far back a person's data bank can really go if they had access to themselves? But even the deep thinkers who are the deep miners, right? Those mm-hmm. people bring these energies or they bring these essences out into the environment and then – these forms that are here in the environment, companies, the big farmers, the big chemists, the idolons, they then take mm-hmm. those ideas and use those ideas. So do you see that that's this whole technique of robbing a being of their soul or their light? Because mm-hmm. soul, of course, is mm-hmm. the sun. So taking a person's bright ideas or their gold, 
because they've mined that in their minds of their own memories when they've gotten to a place where they can think deep enough. And then they birth that just like a child, even the children, out into this dimension that actually begins to manipulate those forms. And this is because there has been an agreement, okay? That's why they call it the covenant of the serpent, which is by salt. Now, salt is a geometric shape of a cube. Is a cognate of the Kaaba, is a cognate of the hexagonal field spinning around the bottom of Saturn. So this covenant basically is like this. Anytime that there's a war, because remember I told you there was a war that went on within. Right. It then manifested itself outside. Now, when someone wins that war, obviously the divisor won. If the divisor didn't win, we would still be together, right? So if the divisor <laughs> won, what was the treaty? Like what did it write and say that <laughs> was not going to be allowed by the humans that were living on the planet? that they could not know about their powers. It's the same thing as with a country that you, like Germany. Germany has a treaty with America, whether you know it or not, that says that they can't actually have certain weapons. And actually, they, the citizens of Germany don't actually belong to Germany. And they even can read that on their own paperwork because of the mm-hmm. treaty that was signed after the war. So what, we're saying, what I'm saying here is, is that tighten up <laughs> because... Mm -hmm. What's going on is right in front of you and very clear. And it's only because we have this constant thing broadcasting, talking about sleep, (laughs) sleep, like the movie they live. Oftentimes, like a Freddy Cooper movie, we have a hard time. It's just like a a dream. And I explain it like this. Sometimes you can have this dream and it'll be so riveting and life changing. When you wake up, you're like, man, I'm so glad to just be out of that dream. And you would swear that you will remember this dream and even act accordingly, appreciating life after that. <laughs> Two weeks gotcha. later, back to the same thing again. This is something that we can watch personally as being a product of when you're in a dense environment, just all around you a lot of times there's no vibratory frequencies. And this is why a big part of our inventions is to put the vibratory frequencies not only in the environment, but in the person's body through water. Because then when their actual primary fuel and uh, astringent, which is what the body is using to rinse most of the stuff is the water, is made in that perfect pattern, which is called a metamaterial, made in that perfect pattern that conducts their bandwidth properly, now we're talking. So you can see why then that if we're creators, but we're constantly (laughs) encouraged to not create, but to work for someone or something else then this is where you don't get these kind of inventions. You don't even get people knowing how to even make a microwave or what even a diode is, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And so this is what we're changing. Got you. So I, I know you got to get you some water in. So, um, I'm on water I right have, here. Okay. So I, so based on what you're saying, it sounds to me that, um, are some of us at the point that number one, we don't want to reincarnate back into density. Um, And then number two, you know, isn't it still all about, like you were saying, us going within doing the necessary work to learn how to be in the now. So meaning you're not focusing on the past. You're not focusing on the future. You're focusing on the now and being that creator. Um, And once you do that internally, you're able to manifest or create and shoot it out to the external, which would contribute to changing or raising the frequency. Or am I like totally off base? <laughs> no, no, that, that's exactly it. And it's, be, and it's also because remember that with these terms, binary and trinary, du, duality, triplicity, mm-hmm. the, what they're referring to is a binary person, let's say, only really has access to two aspects of themselves in balance mm-hmm. or in some mm-hmm. kind of balance or awareness. So this is for the average person, their good and bad side or what they call their awake and their sleep state. In trinary, mm-hmm. this is why it creates many paradoxes, because meaning people can't explain some of the things that can be accomplished in trinary because you're actually in both fields at the same time. Interesting. 
So this is not about moving away from the reality that that's a given anyway with the rise of vibrational frequency. The Mm -hmm. goal is is actually to realize, first of all, that this is going backwards. You've seen all this before, and that's why you have deja vu. Mm -hmm. Now what you need to do is to realize that and then actually reverse the aura, reverse the direction in which your consciousness is going in because it's the direction of death. The reason for this is because most of the magic that's practiced here that manipulates current or currency is necromancy, Mm -hmm. which is towards the direction of the idea of death. Now, what is necromancy? Dead presidents. On a, doll, on a talisman, which is not a dollar, a, a, it's not just a mm-hmm. dollar, it's a talisman. That word doll in dollar means a doll. Okay, so this is a doll with a dead person on it. And then there's some mm-hmm. inscriptions, which is basically their signature, the two-dimensional signature of a, free, a master mason. Mm-hmm. So basically, what are you dealing with here? You're dealing with basically a, a mojo doll right here. And mm-hmm. now this is called the this is in their book called the great work because it's it's the ability to turn dirt into gold to get to take something that basically has no value at all and get the most mm-hmm. precious thing from a person mm-hmm. and doesn't it do I, that? I, so I, so so, mm-hmm. so this I'll say bull f into gold, but yeah, okay, <laughs> I get you. Yeah, or, mm-hmm. or or lead lead was the real term lead into gold, mm-hmm. and so. It's very clear to us then. And so what happens is, is that if we know that the duality is causing this problem, we can do simple exercises like take a recorder around, a small recorder, put it in your pocket or whatever, and then uh, transcribe at the end of the day everything that was said. Hopefully you can just forget that the recorder is even there. And then Mm -hmm. look at in that recording how many times you used words that were not sure of themselves such as belief, maybe. And then when you calculate that against words that are sure of themselves, then you can govern the percentage of how close you are or far away you are from your true self. Because you must know. You cannot play around in this field not knowing because there's this other thing that are called egregors. And egregors are known as artificial life forms because they weren't born in they weren't born in a womb, not artificial because they're not real and they can't move on their own volition. Notice these terms in science don't mean the same interpretations that we're given in, in just standard English. Even the term organic, crystals aren't organic in chemistry. But if you talk to somebody that's like namaste and you tell them the crystal is inorganic, they're like, no, it's inorganic. No, this ain't from Monsanto. They get confused because they're using terms that they don't actually even know the the actual real meaning to. So you could differentiate Mm -hmm. one thing from another. So this term artificial just means it wasn't born in a womb. And so what an Mm -hmm. idol line is, is we have this power, of course. They talk about it a lot now that when we start focusing our intention on something, it begins to manifest. Mm -hmm. So the ancients, which were very large, actually were doing that collectively in order to create these planes like we're living on now, that they would go into Mm -hmm. these levels of meditation to project, create projections, visions, okay, that you can actually animate or live in, just like we create a projection from our mind called a dream, and then we dive in with our astro and start living in the dream. Mm -hmm. So it's the same process, except they knew what they were doing. And in this process, when rituals are done, this means the more beings that you have there doing this, the stronger it is what you're creating. And that's why I said they formed a covenant amongst each other also in the beginning to create something. And so what happened is, is in this process, you get the energies that are actually joined together. And then there is a manifestation. So let me, let me make this simple for everyone to understand. When these rituals take place, like Christianity, what began Christianity What there's specific rules to these rituals because the ones who create the formulas create them from the stars. Because remember, in the stars, it's a time and a place for everything. So certain energies are going to move through at a certain time. And then when you concentrate certain things around those times, it's like you're literally just like you're using a rotary phone. You're dialing in literally what you're creating. And so they would get into these massive rituals and create these eidolons because the eidolons can roam about the astral plane. They don't have the same limitations of the physical body. So it became almost like a familiar or ran for a magician or a sorcerer or a magus or a goddess or whatever you want to give them the name of. It became a Mm -hmm. working being that could go through the astral plane that actually belonged to them. So what happens is, is that in this process, you'll find that this eidolon is actually created. Now, most eidolons, 
from the old times do not bear at all a resemblance of what they initially started as. And this is because as time goes on, because we're still talking about physical finite worlds, as time goes on, the people who originally are the beings who originally created many of these initial rituals will try to pass those rituals on to their in, the, the adherents, right? Like the, mm-hmm. the neophytes or the, the initiates. Mm-hmm. So this is like the same thing with Earth. There were rituals that went on with Earth that the ancestors actually attempted to pass on to what would be us now, but the ball dropped, literally. So mm-hmm. that's why there's no rites of passage or anything. But through this process, what the rituals are teaching you is how to keep control of the Eidolon by staying in control of the original principles of how it was de- created. And when the, there's a deviation in the ritual, when somebody forgets the part or somebody doesn't even do it, the Eidolon actually starts moving or the egregor actually starts moving on its own volition, meaning that it actually starts to think and move on its own. And then after a while, it can't be controlled. And this is actually a state that pretty much every religion is in right now, that they cannot actually be controlled by the people who are saying that they're on the top of the religion. So because the reason why this is important is because that's religion, but we create Mm -hmm. idolons ourselves. So if you have this idea, and this is how tricky it gets, if you have this idea of who you think you are that you've been carrying around for the last 30, 40, 50 years, mm-hmm. when it's time to actually go into who you truly are because all of that is really artificial, that's just not who you right. are, you're something much more greater, this thing does not want to die. So they even have books about how you have to kill the Gregor. But, you know, we're not even going to get into that, but it's just a basic thing to realize that you'll start feeling uncomfortable about your change. You'll start feeling like you should go back to your old way of being. You'll basically start the battle that goes on within with the person basically beginning the process of nullifying and destroying what they've created. And this is why it says in the book, what has God wrought? And what that means is what have we done as gods? What did we actually create? And if mm. we start looking deep into, well, well, now we got to commit this being. This being even believes that it's going to die. This being believes that it has a limitation, whether it's called color. This, belief mm-hmm. mean, this, this being believes it even has a history that is not even serving it. You see what I mean? Because once you start mm-hmm. taking on one thing, it's like a slippery slope. But they tell you you're green, and now you take on all of the essence of the green men, you just accepted a program, no matter how you look at right. it. And it's because right. you cannot live back in those times again to actually say what really went on there. So you won't have experience. You'll have knowledge. And knowledge is, mm-hmm. is, is not wisdom. And this is the thing. So a person can't read a book and then put the book down and say, okay, I know about it. No. We need to get on the field so we can see if right. you really know and about experience. it. Let's put you exactly. to the test. And this is why the last thing for one, us to realize is, is that that whole balance and harmony, which is balance is not a side, that we need so desperately to actually achieve is our real way out. So we control, or in in this case, and we control when that is activated. And it's about, at this time, arbitrating. You literally have a Cain and an Abel set up in your temple, <laughs> the two sides of the head, with the mm-hmm. left and the right brain, don't think alike, and each have their own way of seeing the reality, both created, creating themselves as idolizers. They're not even real. They're artificial. They're only a part of this little small wavelength we're calling life. And these mm-hmm. two are actually keeping us in a back-and-forth process that does benefit, let's say, the one who's calling himself God right now because mm-hmm. the earth is its footstool, meaning that, hey, this is what I will travel on because all, still all the conflict that you're seeing here with self create combustion just like an engine. And then that creates force, which is power and power is only brokered by time. Now those laws that I'm just telling you are actually the laws of the power company. Those are the laws of the the companies that supply the lights that we turn on every single day. But then when you look at it on a metaphysical level, you're like, well, wait a minute then that means that the as above level of power like what we even will call spiritual power, is actually our mm-hmm. light and our electricity. And, and, and if we're not even 
doing if we're not even causing that phenomenon, which is why I said you should be you should work on becoming a sovereign and keep that as your focus and it will happen. Right. If you're mm-hmm. not even causing that phenomenon, then someone else has power over you. You. Wow. You and and it, it's as simple as that. And that and knowing that, like they say on G. I. Joe where they're fighting Cobra, knowing mm-hmm. that is half the battle. Just knowing that alone, say, Oh, okay, I see what time it is then. See, I'm Stop looking in the past to be like, oh, man, if I had a known or I should. That same reflection is going to get a continuous reincarnation and has always gotten a continuous incarnation going on. Now, here's the slick thing about the Matrix. There's a Roman version of you. There's the Egyptian. There's a Kemetan version. There's a Watusi mm-hmm. version. Mm-hmm. Because all is self, but people don't get it. It's math, though. It's Mayat. If we take a pyramid, that's a symbol of the Mayat. You go back, your mother, your mother's mother, your mother's mother, your mother's mother, your mother's mother. Now, eventually, you're going to get all the way up into some Russian mothers, and they're going to have gotten up into your mother. There's going to be some, and it's all right. really going to go back all the way into one being. That's a hermaphrodite, mm-hmm. androgynous. Now, if we don't believe that that's possible. Why there's the hermaphrodites now? I'm not talking about fairy tales. I'm talking about what the lure says and where it all begins and where it all ends. And what we can do, because remember, if we're always willing to accept the good part, this is how we, we become the, the lamb meat, because we're supposed to be so good, right? So we always want to see the good part. We always want to see the good thing. And this is synonymous with why we only see one side of the moon. And why we only have one half of our language, English has 26 characters, which is really a 52-character language, like a, a 52 weeks in a year. So we only want the good part, but we don't want the bad part, and this keeps us ignorant because we can't see then the bad part to realize, hey, these are both the same thing. Now, mm-hmm. if a person's been running on binary forever, when they even think about that, are you saying that good is the same as is the bad they start fusing up like that's crazy because you're saying like Mother <laughs> Teresa is the same as the rapist. This doesn't make any sense. And because they're doing that, they're trying to philosophize mm-hmm. something that is not something you can think about. You can't think whether you're good or bad. You've already made the judgment. You have to know there's no such thing. You're moving with wow. purpose. And this is what keeps things off your mind because they say the idle mind is the devil's workshop. And it's because when you engage, and I can tell you how this happens neurologically, when you engage in division, you activate the R complex of the brain, which is literally a cog. This is like a cog in a clock that rolls mm-hmm. the entire mechanation, which is your brain, backwards into the past. Because remember, the, the, the serpent's memory is memories. It's waves mm-hmm. and sounds. It's mm-hmm. basically the past. And so when we engage that part, we immediately start reflecting from there. And this is why anyone who's ever gotten to a deep meditation, the moment they start thinking, the deep meditation is over. Anyone yep. who's come out of a dream and wants to and, and starts thinking, they start forgetting the dream. And this is because literally, physically, there's an engagement in the part of the brain that starts rewinding things and pulling it backwards and pulling it away so you can't actually see any of the higher vibratory things. So what we've learned to do is actually how to engage the consciousness without using the reptilian or R complex. Now, we're not trying to get rid of it because you're going to need it to operate in the matrix. It needs to know specific codes that allow you Mm -hmm. to get what you need up out of this thing and get to your sovereignty without a moment's delay. But that, right. you know, I, I'm teaching a course now. I'm call, it's called Ambassador Training. It's on this uh, site that I've created called Spiritex. And what Spiritex mm-hmm. is, is basically I realize the biggest problem is we could talk about all we want, how this food was great to eat and how all these different things that could help a person but if, or, or a being. But if they didn't get any money, if they don't have money to buy all this expensive organics and all of that, then what's going to happen then? So then you're basically telling a person a solution to an issue that they can't even correct because there's another much more greater issue. So why don't we focus on the greater issue? And that's why I said if people think that if people can't figure out money, they can't figure out the ninth heaven. Forget Hmm. about it. It's not that complex. We are making it complex because we believe that we're supposed to be impoverished. And this is the belief that comes directly out of the mindset of someone or something that is trying to demoralize you to decrease worth. And then, that's, then when we do that, we overvalue the reality. So we start spending our own current, which is the energy rolling through our body. 
mm-hmm. and then we mm-hmm. catch inflation, meaning that we don't under, understand exactly how valuable our time is anymore. Sometime our time now is worth seven dollars an hour, or six dollars an hour. You crazy? Yeah, it's which like, is crazy. It, mm-hmm. I mean, you, I mean, we talk about a lot more than that. I mean, so that's the thing is that when you can restore that with a person because they don't connect. Notice how there's no connection between church and state still. I mean, there's no connection in the mind um, spiritually with the financial currency. person doesn't realize that actually the energy that is coursing through their body does equate to how much money that they have in the world. Now, if you want to know, again, the riddle with why what they call evil people, bad people have a lot of money, and it's because they do what they're doing without any thought anymore about it. They don't even have any interruptions. Why a good person, should I do that? Do I really want to go there? I wonder if I should start this business. I want to help people, but are they going to think I'm all about the money? I, I mean, this is going to, is this distracting me? Am I supposed, this is actually the mind of most quote unquote conscious people that there's so many actual judgments going on you will witness something is actually going on intentional to fuse conscious people's quote unquote conscious people's minds in an infinite mm-hmm. loop to where they only think 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 but they don't know <laughs> now look in the text thought who is thought created as, the, as a symbol the idea of thinking and language and all of that and what it tells you is, is that that was all summed up into one symbol where our ancient language is from. But it tells you when you bring out thought, now it's like you're opening Pandora's box because the real adepts, the acolytes of the flux, they don't think. You can't. That's why the greatest basketball players are not thinking about when they shoot that shot. Is it going in that hole? <laughs> that you can't use thought to do that. It moves too slow. You need the zone. And the yeah. zone is zen, zen is focus, focus mm-hmm. is the point, the point is the peak, the peak is the pentacle, or the pinnacle, which is the tip of the star when it's upright, meaning that you're right mm-hmm. there, ping, I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm present. And then in right. that present, which is an anagram for the word serpent, then you can overcome them because it moves fast. This happens so mm-hmm. fast, all of this, what we're experiencing, that a person doesn't even, is kind of disorientated. But when that point where you confront yourself, because uh, at the end of the day, the king and the pawn go back in the same box. This means that at the end, that same thing that has been the problem was you. Hmm. This is where the whole judgment thing, it, it collapses on itself. The last point is whatever you condensed as being your nemesis is you. So get out of the way of yourself. That's and that's right. all I have to tell people at times is, look, just. It's you. It's not any of these other things that you're actually exclaiming that it is. Right. But I'll let you do that right. because that is a product that we've all of something that we've all been through. But mm-hmm. there's a point in time where that has to actually come to a cease, and then you must get, go into action because you're so right. ready. Like all that time we spent in the club, <laughs> we needed that time actually. <laughs> right. So we right. have to kind of get this in high gear. And, and do some quantum because the quantum can put you right back to where you're supposed to be because, you know, you'll, you'll be able to reverse your field. But the thing is, is that, that that's what should not delay. And that, that's what I have to say about the whole thing. Wow. Well, <laughs> real quick, I know, Brother Sean, you're going to have some because you in the <laughs> amen, quote, quote, section, <laughs> well, as, as I was amen. And, okay. So now, Brother, you kind of blew my wig back when – You said when we were talking about the third density and you said, you know, we're at the point of not like getting out of it because you still have to know how to navigate in it. But we're at the point now where you will be operating simultaneously in dimensions. So meaning you will be in the third density, but also operating in the higher planes. And I, I just kind of got, you know, really, really excited let, let me, about that. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, well let, let, me, let me just explain it very simply. Okay. The, the, what it is, is is that you can't think your way into this. Mm-hmm. You already know it. So what you yep. need to do is deprogram the process of thinking, which is judgment. So let me explain this. 
You're going to have to do it. You live in a physical reality. You live in a matrix. It requires that you judge at every single moment. You have two eyes. So anything you see through two eyes, you're going to see dual right away. So it's literally mm-hmm. hard-coded. Most of this duality, two hands, two feet, night, day. But that in-between point only lasts for a moment. Do you know the in-between point of night and day can only last for a short moment? So this is the space that you're looking to get into. So how this works is, is that you literally get to a point where you realize there was some stuff that you actually learned a long time ago that if you had took serious from that point, there was nothing else to really learn. Mm-hmm. You could just accept that that's happening and then go ahead and move, or as I say, it just is. And then go ahead and move right into your plan. And so th- every day I'm, I hear certain things and people hear certain things. And I even tell people certain things that if they were truly awake and they believe what I was saying right away, if not, at least when they got off the phone, there would be some kind of change. Like if I say, hey, you know, uh, uh, you won the lottery. You just need to get downtown. When you hang up that phone, <laughs> you see what I mean? It's going to be a different right. kind of whole thing going on. So this is how we test ourselves. I'm not saying anything is right or wrong about this. What I'm saying right. is, is that if you keep playing the game with yourself, that is how much you know, when you mm-hmm. were there at the right time, what color mm-hmm. you are, all these different things you can come up with that is going to govern if whether or not you, quote unquote, make it or not, you already made it. You're unmaking yeah. it. This is basically coming at this in an entirely different way. That way you can outsmart the serpent because what the serpent is going to ask you is if this is your projection then and you created all of this, why don't you know anything about it? This is the game. Mm -hmm, And this knowing mm -hmm. that it's referring to is like book knowledge. Like why don't you know about the the, the speed of light and why don't you you have a doctor's degree and why did they accept you in college and why didn't your family – uh, treat you like they were supposed to, and why? And it just it will keep coming with all of its own knowledge, which is its own way of actually gauging what's what's good and what's bad, because it has no mm-hmm. reason. You see what I mean? <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's, it, it, it's on it's a primitive state of consciousness, but it serves its purpose. Just like uranium is here on the planet, it, and and then also cotton candy. And every single thing in between, we get it. The architect is placing every single thing it needs to continuously build these physical realities. Now, about me, though, because I (laughs) see that's the difference between a sovereign and a servant. It's a thin line. Some approach the throne like, oh, most mighty and all powerful, I bow down before you. I approach the throne. It's me, myself, and you. I'm only asking for what is mine. Exactly. You see what I mean? This is my allotment. See, in the book, it tells you how the, that, that basically that they call it the supplanting. And this is in all ancient texts. This is Romulus and Remus. This is uh, Cain and Abel. This is uh, 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 Esau and Jacob. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what this supplanting actually is about is when someone can steal your birthright. They can mm-hmm. basically make you believe that you are the lower form or the serpent or the mm-hmm. slave unit. Okay, now this is like computer programming, though, because all this illusionary thing is created off the same stuff that we're calling technology on steroids. Because what it happens is, is that this whole projection, again, as being the host and then the slave. Mm-hmm. So it's like basically one being sits in the position of being the oversoul. And then the other being sits in the position of being the dense life form that is commanded by the oversoul. Switch places. Mm. Where what must come up, must, what is it? What comes up must come down. Comes down. This right. is all that's happening is that we've been convinced to stay in the lower aspect of mm-hmm. ourselves when we can really be riding the tip of the thing, right. where we, which, we, which we already know how to do. It's like when every time someone starts coming back in the day based on this in ancient encrypted language, see, because they're going to keep creating stories that create history, but history is a program. So the moment, that's mm-hmm. what the Mandela effect really is. The moment that the collective consciousness is used to begin to believe something, it starts solidifying in what we're calling the past. And since everybody's moving in that direction of death, this means that they'll eventually experience it and recollect it as to be true. And if you mm. cannot realize that that's going on because it's a simple sleight of hand, and that's how sorcerers work. When you study this, 
like I said, good is only 180 degrees turned on its head is evil. When you study this, you realize that there's two sides to this blade. That's why they say it's a, it's a coin. And the king has this coin, and there's two sides to this coin of this old two-face. So just like in the reality, everyone wants to play like they're the good one when they do in their own measure the badness in which they claim and they claim to hate so much. I'm saying, hey, don't think about it. Move, right. move on. Get your mind right. free of all of that trying to do. Exactly. Get a, move with volition. Get a plan. And how you do that is saying, okay, I need to become sober. Let's start off with a generator then. Let's start off with, you know, studying some of these things like graphene, studying some of these things that, that really go. The knowledge is now available. Look at industry. Industry is going to it's basically show you where it's about to go. They don't even have enough inventors to create things. We don't have conscious people creating conscious materials that even emit an inkling most of the time of what we're talking about here, but we will. And actually, mm-hmm. there are some that are already leaking out, but someone's got to actually start it, and that one is – can be condensed in everyone because at the end of this, and, I, and I'll just explain, so why? Because people say, well, why? Why is all this going on? And if you're saying that this realm was actually constructed by an architect who's also known as the angel, why did it construct it? Because it was attempting to perform alchemy. And in its alchemy, what it's doing is putting every single living being here under pressure or in the crucible. That's what the crucifixion is you're, when you're crossed mm-hmm. between the four elements. So now you're really, now you're, you're quadary. It's like you're back on a dual number again with the four elements. So what happens is when a person's strung across the four elements or the wheel, in this process, through their judgments, listen to what I'm saying, through their judgments, they begin to create things that don't have those same judgments. And let me give you the, same, the example. When generally if there is, let's say, homosexual parents, gay or lesbian parents, brother, sister, whatever, when a child is produced, as that child grows up in that environment, it will be less prone to thinking of ideas like that's even wrong. So that judgment is removed. It even mm-hmm. works on small things like color that when the next being comes in the world, they no longer have like if a lady is all her life in this room and living in this room and the baby is there with her and lays I hate this color, I hate this color. This baby is actually going to come out not hating that color. It's the same thing with roaches. The roaches eat the poison, and then when the babies come out, they're immune to the poison. You get it? So every single being is being used as, a, as an alchemical vessel within themselves to produce eventually what would be an apex human. Now, an apex human would probably be something like, uh, well, I won't, I won't give any visuals, just understanding that it's a being with no judgment at all. They'll attempt to accomplish that on the physical plane. They believe that all this going crazy and then going back church again is a part of the whole process because it's wrenching people from one thing to another so that there are tons of experiences going on. And then there's a continuous distillation within each human being when they pass from the planet and they still leave their creations to where their creations actually don't have the same judgments that they do. So they're expecting, and this is the great work, they're expecting it to mm-hmm. distill within one being. That being, let me explain this, that being will then be extracted, just like they talk about in the alchemical procedure. Once they get to the panacea, they then need to extract it. So this is almost like a UFO visitation. So this being then is extracted, and within all, of the, within all the beings that lived, according to their theories, mm-hmm. they'll all be inside of that one being because it won't have the same limitations. And so what they're, because they're saying the, the greatest mind will always encapsulate other minds. And this is why I say get out the mind. There's only keys and codes here. Like I'm telling you how their system works, not so you could be daunted by it or think you're going to go and try to control it. I'm telling you to, to how it works so that you can realize if this is not <laughs> like floating your boat right now, right, literally, right. and you're ready to move on to – you know, when it's above the wave, see, because we're now in, in the slag now. That's the vibration and the density is so dense. But this is also necessary if you want to understand the purpose. If the earth was vibrating at even twice the frequency that is vibrating now, no life forms mm-hmm. could live here as we know them in physicality. It would shake them all off. Earth is slow, like a mother, warm, because low vibratory frequency base, negative, 
because those smaller life forms that are just now getting their sea legs need to stand up mm-hmm. and then realize how to start seeing like what's happening, get their vision back. That's what the horse is. You get your vision. Come out, come get you're blinded right now with this dualistic vision. You're cross eyed. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And it's like and it's and it's sucking all of our time and that's how we know we're in a gaze with this thing. It's like standing in a gaze with a cobra. You're just locked on with this thing and this dualistic reality and we're not seeing actually like when you take some ayahuasca or you take some DMT, the whole thing turns into it. Your computer, mm-hmm. your floor, your T V, the tree, mm-hmm. everything turns into it because you're always locked in a gaze with this thing. And I don't, you know, I, I, this, this is, it's an adventure, though. <laughs> like, remember, this is not hocus pocus or mysticism. Like I said, let's put a right. mist all around it so you can't see what's going on. This is an adventure. And if you remember yourself as a child, which is the closest that you will ever remember yourself to being at the peak or at the point, you were, a, you were an explorer. <laughs> Tell me mm-hmm. you weren't. You were an explorer. Everything, right. even if it was just walking up the street, was an adventure. You can watch kids do it now. They'll take a small space in a room in a corner and start creating an entire world right there. Right. So we have the. So I don't need to know uh, uh, somebody else's knowledge and all of that kind of stuff. I just need to know myself because that's belief. They write all the books, but they don't even know the answers according to them, them themselves. So that's in the belief realm. And see, the whole realm then is full of the belief. And you can pull the, the, even the word apart about understanding the lies of light. So what happens is now we are moving into this whole other field. At least some of us are. And we're, we're, we're shining like beacons to others. And it's radiating through another level. Like this is just a conversation. The true essence you can gather. And I'll, I'll, just so you understand, it's all about how open you are. You can gather every single thing I know when I say only one word. You can literally extract all my knowledge from that one tone and vibration if you was tuned in and so too Mm -hmm. someone can do it to me i could do it to them when i'm listening to some professor or whatever talking on youtube about something that he doesn't even really know what he knows because he's thinking Mm -hmm. (laughs) that explains Mm -hmm. why when you get these people with 15 20 30 years a degree under the belt you're like and why are they supposed to figure out right what is happening here it's because they are not, they're compartmentalized. That's literally the term. They probably stick them right in the R complex. They get the hierarchical system going on, the emulation of my app pyramidal system that they have with a boss and all the rest of the mm-hmm. beings that are above them. And then they go into working like this slave in their own mind in harnessing in this lab coat in this white area their brightest ideas. Right. And, and then that is then taken and then shaped and formed in fashion. Even person told, okay, great, thanks for that. Okay, well, we're going to get away with that project right now. We're going to put that away. We need you to work on something else. And this, this is why. And look, all you have to do, you don't need to believe the past anymore. Just believe the time that you've been alive. And if you start mm-hmm. just doing that alone, it is not disempowering. It is empowering because you will know what you've experienced and then act accordingly. See, because if you go back 2,000, 3,000 years and you're adding all that in with where you're at now, you can come out with the wrong balance. You're taking energy from another space and trying to calculate where you are. Just calculate where you are by the space that you've been in and what's happened to you here to make your move. When you do that, you'll find that that move will be, should be towards sovereignty. When you put it in your mind, it will sit in your mind as a point of focus, like a bow and an arrow. It will be pointed in the right direction. So that way, when you're dealing with the same stuff you're going to have to deal with tomorrow, it's not going to feel the same because you're going to move with a purpose. You're going to be like, you know what? This is exactly, this is how you use negative and turn it to positive. You say, this is exactly why That's right. I'm going to become a, this is exactly why I need to become a soul. Why am I dealing with this you see? So that's what I do. Every time I deal with something that I don't like to deal with, it only speeds me. Oh, I got to get to become a sovereign right now because mm-hmm. I'm going to keep dealing with this and worse. And remember, I'm, I'm on like the top layer right now. I'm on the layer cake at this point as far as when I'm gleaning from the reality. But it's still mm-hmm. because of my own lack of, 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 of connection. See, think about it. And this is what a lot of people won't say. 
You got to operate every single day in the dualistic mainframe, even by okay. using right. language. So you have to develop a really unique technique to actually be in both spaces at the same time, mm-hmm. being in that all powering. I, you know, I already did this. You know, that's a person walking with confidence, right? And then at, at the same time, I have to step outside and then stick your thumb out to get a ride somewhere or whatever. It's a process <laughs> here, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which mm-hmm. even funnier as like some kind of commercial, right? But see, I'm telling you, taking the small opportunities first and not trying to look for the big fish all the time is the sure way to already start firing them laser beams through because you're not working on this level. You're just carrying it out so that way you make the efforts that's going to cause it to happen on an entirely different mainframe. You're just taking mm-hmm. back your ship. This is why there's so many mm. stories about these shipwrecked ships. They went against the, the current and then found themselves off in somebody else's planetary sphere at the wrong place in the wrong time, and now they're on the rocks. And then, look, this sounds like the story of some racial groups. And now (laughs) they got to get a galactic tow truck to come through here and to put them back on course. And that's all I'm doing. Uh, And I'm doing that by putting myself back on course, not by Mm -hmm. going and reading some knowledge and then bringing it back. All the times of us gathering just knowledge from some external source and then coming to this microphone and and vainly reciting, that never Mm -hmm. even started when I even beginning this because you should have Gnosticism at a certain point because there's a frequency moving around three or four in the morning that will tell you everything you need to know if you're listening. And and that's called, and she was even personified as wisdom. So what we have to keep moving up this ladder, like they said, behold, I saw the ladder going up and down and they were descending and ascending. Who is they? Us. Yep. Get back to the top of the ladder. And that's all it is. And then this space, because don't expect for just poof, the reality be gone and just hocus pocus. No. It will be, you will watch yourself progressively from this environment, Earth Prime, going through your process of finally seeing your fulfillment. Not happiness, fulfillment, mm-hmm. where you can now feel mm-hmm. like you got the t-shirt, I don't need to be coming back here. It ain't because uh, I, don't, I don't need to redeem myself with Kiera and, 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 and Michael and, and all the rest right. of them. I don't, all of these different things that we have accumulated within this monkey slash reptilian mind, we can have that, they can have that back. Hey, take mm-hmm. the mind, take the memory, I'm going into the experience. So that's mm-hmm. what we're talking about. And we, can, and we begin that process now. This is not something that we wait for because we train our minds. So that way when you glide up out of this, it won't be a real, like, struggle. And that's why I say, you know, the elements do help a lot. The breathing helps a lot because it starts letting you become feel- familiar with that space that actually is what accompanies what occurs when you die, oxygenating yourself properly. That's why I put the whole body breathing videos up, oxygenating yourself 15 minutes, only 15 minutes before you're going to bed, entirely different dream space entirely different just making those efforts and just basically being the controller of your own your own realm and that's mm-hmm. all that we're talking about here you're just putting yourself back into the driver's seat so you know what i got this from i can do you know how something i can do better than this right <laughs> well go ahead right and, and that's all we're talking about <laughs> get out of the judgment the good and the bad that oscillate time and then get right into the now and the present and the balance stay your fo- keep your focus on sovereignty and then get ready to see the greatest part of yourself because it's already there. Wow. All right, Brother Sean. I know you go head on because I had my Y'all brother supposed to have something for me. Y'all got to come in now. I mean, we got about, I guess, you know, it's eight. I guess we got about, I don't know, about 30 more minutes. I'm not sure, but. Yeah, you know, we could, yeah. You know. I think we're going to open it up to the family, too, to give them an opportunity. So go ahead on, Brother Sean. I don't want to be selfish. <laughs> Yeah, I find it interesting the uh, the term sovereignty because in a quote unquote conscious community or in the Moorish community they seem to frown on that word sovereign. They seem to associate that with quote unquote Caucasians who say that it's a mm-hmm. quote unquote white movement. And well, well let me let me demystify, let me demystify some things about the language. 
just really briefly, just before we move on, just because I can, can I, I can stay with the point or the topic. Okay. All the words are bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. What we did was that that's what the code of the matrix was, is that I took par- apart all the words and I show how all the words like when like related to time, let's say week. So this means having no energy days. This means confused men, meaning small. Mm-hmm. So all of these different units of power actually had negative connotations when you just looked at the either the word as it is or you began to pull it apart or you began to put a, a letter and other letters in front of it. Mm-hmm. So I got in the beginning, though, on this whole process of attempting to eliminate certain words. <laughs> and this started making it more complex to communicate with people. But I was getting by. <laughs> but what I started realizing when I start seeing deeper things that were taking apart languages, because when I discovered the code in the language, after I fully cracked the code, I wanted to know, did the code actually exist in other languages? And I found out actually, yes, that every single language and actually some even more intrinsic, like Hebrew, for instance, when you drop it all down on itself, it makes a, a star of David. So the entire la- uh, or a Megan star, as they call it. So the entire language is actually encased in one symbol. English also mm-hmm. has a symbol that it's encased in. But I realized that especially with English, the 26 letters that we were given, this A to Z, is actually what moves in the direction of where the clock is moving, which is actually the direction of decay. While the other 26 mm. letters actually moves in the opposite direction, it moves in the, the, the direction of regeneration. So, and mm-hmm. this is called a cabal, because the word cabal comes from the root a cable, meaning that the first, the first point must connect to the last. So what I started realizing is if we're going to play the game with the words, this actually gives a person this tangent that they sometimes jump on. And I'm no way saying it's you, but you've met people like this. And I've met people and even been the person at a certain point of, hey, brother, wait, let me stop with exactly what you're saying. And, 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 but that word that you're using, because emancipation is supposed to be another word that's like that. But it's actually it's all the words. And this is how I found out also that it's even deeper than I was able to crack in, on the surface of the code, that when you look into Arabic, actually across all the languages from the Heretic and Demotic script, you actually find this scenario where like the V is the B mm-hmm. and uh, the W and the M, and then you start finding basically that, that many of these letters, when you cross them into other languages, they're actually the same letter. But there's mm-hmm. a way to do that with every single letter, proving that every single letter is actually one letter, really. Now, how does that get by in reality? It's because we created so many divisions by creating words Mm. that we can even create this impossibility. Even our existence in time is impossible. So this is the place that the impossible happens. This is where the paradox is. So, you know, just to, to demystify, again, the words that are being used, sovereignty to me is the one that everyone is, so, sovereignty is the one that everyone is familiar with, and it's also the one that the most programming has been done around for a person to say, oh, okay, I know what that is, unless they've had a bad experience from some of these also so-called conscious people running around saying that they're going to give people that ability and then mm-hmm. taking people's money all the way to the point where now the word is now become synonymous with being something negative in the person's mind. But either mm-hmm. way, negative or positive, I'm just using the word to say, get yourself independent, get yourself your power, your force. And all those words, again, we can pull them apart, but this is you know, ultimately what I mean. And again, it's just a word that I find that people are very familiar with when being used. Oh, I ain't had no mistake, brother. I'm just get that out there for the listeners who don't understand because we got quite a few who follow the script to the letter. <laughs> for sure. They for sure. The script to the letter. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Uh-huh. Go ahead, br- been, brother I've, Wendell. I've been telling y'all how important these words are. You got to look into this thing. It'll take you on a whole. It'll take you on a whole another ride that you ain't been on before. I appreciate you bringing that out there like that, bro. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, honestly, what it does is they give you the entire story because the language is the code, right? 
And yep. so you can't just switch the code like that. You got to keep some of the old code. All the, You basically can't change language overnight is what I'm saying. So inside yeah, of the language is there there's a there's a there's a story being told. And then when yeah. you know about the certain meanings of certain words, like the S is always a symbol of the snake. And mm-hmm. you know, and it even stands up right like that. And then when you go all the way back to the the more the ancient star language, it actually connects to that constellation. So you know, yeah. there's this so so this is not so I would say it's not so uh mystical that we can't actually go and pull raw data about what exactly we're in because to be quite frank our our ancestors knew the ins and out of this entire thing so that means that we know because we are our right. ancestors right right yeah yeah I, well, see, if you if you if you if you get if you get an understanding of this word game that's what i call it the word game you can see you can see how it builds on itself now, mm-hmm. how do how do we want to get back to where we're supposed to be? You got to learn how this thing is built so you can go back. You you have to. Exactly. That's that's, that's, that's a funny statement. They say you learn, now you must unlearn. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. I like to say it's not, that it's it, it's called deconstruction. Yeah. <laughs> see, see, they came with this thing called reconstruction when we actually supposed to be deconstructed. That's the way to look at it. Okay, sis, go ahead. You know, I would like to say that they deliberately have educated all of us to be the slave because they use that word, I would say religiously, (laughs) to indoctrinate our people. And you were saying that the overseer, there has to be an overseer and the slave. And what they programmed us to do is to lose our powers by using the education of where we came from instead of what purportedly where we came from instead of where we need to be. And our people, our children especially, mm-hmm. have internalized all the words of what <laughs> they supported, purportedly was before, and we need to undo those things, and it's a good thing that you're working on trying to undo those things and get the our people and our children the idea that they can be better than the words that are spoken to them every day they learn it in school, or somebody say, "Well, I was or you were a slave or you were this or you were that, and get rid of that. That dynamics and start allowing allow them to create a new future for themselves. I mean, I'm, I'm with you, sister. I mean, I mean, it, and, it, and it really, it really says itself for what it is when it when they say um, in the ancient text, if if it can be named, it can be controlled. That's mm-hmm. right. And That's and then the right. anagram for the word the name, of course, is is amen, uh-huh. which means mm-hmm. hidden. So it means that yeah. right away. The person then is cloaked by the name that is given to them, which is supposed right. to be the expression of who they are, but it cannot fulfill that. And then so the casting of the mold begins, and this is actually a process of the of the of the machination itself, the, the how you form a solid idea around what the person believes that they are, so that they cannot be limitless anymore. How they create mm-hmm. boundaries. And, and regulations for themselves that end up hindering and hedging in their being versus, and we have a clear, we have a clear sight of, of what it's like to not do that when we watch children. Right. And so if we can imagine we move like children, but with wisdom, now we're talking, it's like, right. you know, so these are the things that it, as long as we're in a world where there is still an, uh, there's an opposition, because I, I, I know for sure what happens is, you get to a point to where you whack so strong, you literally create a field or almost like a repulsion bubble around you that if something is not harmonized or doesn't resonate, you have to make a very strong effort to pull it into your field. And, mm-hmm. you know, this is why, you know, when somebody says you're trying too hard or something, and you, you know, you're trying to really make something work and it's just not happening, it's just, you, you, it, you will get it to work. But it is, there is some resistance there of pulling it into your field. And so this is a big key thing, as you, as you were saying, is look, instead of looking back 
for uh, at what is supposedly there, looking to what is is supposed to be, and that is the mm-hmm. the, the biggest switch in the direction of our consciousness, and uh, and and that that's one of the the main things that I mean I've discovered a lot of things on this path, you know, some maxims, but the main one now I'm realizing is the knowing. Right. And that takes mm-hmm. a, that takes some time to because you can't think your way into the knowing. It's just a process that you go through with yourself when you're ready to accept yourself, right. and exactly. then, and then begin to accept this mantle of, of, of power that comes with being you, you know. And and, uh, and that's why because right now we have all these regulators, we have all these capacitors, we have all of these different uh, interruptions in our energy stream. And that's exactly how electronic devices set up. There's all these different things breaking down the energy before it gets to, so we can run through this entire system. We can sit at the mm-hmm. peak of our consciousness. Now, also, let's talk about though how we can apply some of this to, to the youngsters and, and those making moves now. I have some friends that one of them, Lem, uh, Lemuel LaRoche, who's working with Chess and Community, who's working with inner city youth and, 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 uh, and teaching them how chess relates to what goes on in life. And, mm-hmm. you know, this is a this is a massive humanitarian effort. He even just recently came back from Ethiopia after taking the kids there to to play chess with the Ethiopian children. And what I started noticing for sure is, is that this bridge that we have is really calling on us to to utilize even some of these technologies to actually begin to use that as a throughput to reach children. Like if you notice how Apple they let me just give a quick example. Apple didn't come out with a VR device because they realized that if they went the other way, which is called augmented reality or AR, then they would potentially put the largest platform on the world because everyone, or because all the people who have the Apple and the iPads and the, and the i whatever. So what I'm saying is, is that you can, with one fail swoop, put this back in balance. Mm-hmm. Now this is not in balance. That's what, what happens with, with uh, good and evil, right, or light and dark, is that it's right. never in balance. So if we're right. looking for it to actually come in balance, the only thing it can get is closer to the center, right? right. Well, now mm-hmm. it's actually swinging over heavy to one end. It's like when something's lopsided, right? So surely exactly. we could give it a nudge back into the direction that it's supposed to go in while we're heading that way ourselves. Right. And that's kind of what it really is. It's about, see... All of that power that's pinned up, because when there's a lot of negativity, so too there's positivity. But if there's not that many people who know how to draw from positive force, right? this is what I'm saying. This is not neutral yeah. I'm talking about. I'm talking about positive. Positive is a force that's so strong, it's like putting your hand on an outlet. It doesn't work like the negative force does, which works on a more subtle or subconscious realm. Power or positivity works on the physical reality, but it is also electrifying. This is why if you check out Dynamo Jack, the Qigong master from the Urban Java, just type in Dynamo Jack in YouTube and check him out, and you'll see it's not a hoax. Human beings have a power that comes from their hands that one can freeze and the other one can set things on fire. So that state can't be reached unless you get the duality out of your mind. And he explains it in the video. Now, I just gave you a whole hour, two hours worth of another way of explaining it, but he just says that right at the apex of yourself, which is right around your belly button area, the two energies meet there in the Dantain. And what he does, which he accomplished through meditation, what he says, is that he forces the energies to come together. And what this does is it creates a surge of power and energy. That's exactly how a battery works. You force the positive and negative poles to come together, which creates a pressure and a force. There's power. So since we literally have the external formula for power, we only need to apply that same formula internally. And that's why I say that that's where the, that's where the work comes in. Cause now when you look at yourself and it's like, well, how, how long does it take before we're already jumping back on somebody else and wasting our time, giving our energy to that Eidolon. Now mm, here's right. another uh, thing that you should understand about the Eidolon. It needs positive and negative energy. Just like we need positive and negative energy in these bodies. The Eidolon mm. needs po- positive and negative. This is why the media loves the hate. Trump is becoming an extremely large eidolon on the astral plane right now. 
And it's because it has the hate, and then it has these fanatics. But right. so does Islam. So does Islam. So those are the egregors, and that's how they work. So this is also why when that crosses over to industry, industry is like, well, we need some dish. We need something they say that he did, did bad. Let, let yeah. him go to jail. And then people say, well, how could he go to jail? They Google the name. Oh, young Fetty Wap, whatever. He's going to jail. And then album sales go up. Everything goes up because it's just about sending energy down a current. And as strong as that energy could be, if there's a collector on the end, see this thing now that we're dealing with, because all the stuff I'm explaining to you has already been for those who are in the know. Right. Now what you have is, is this is all like intentional. They literally use all of their characters that they have in their play, which is their as below stars, the fallen mm-hmm. stars. That's why they put their little fallen star on Hollywood. You're still living right. in a realm. And this is why I said, this is how you know where you're at. They reward people for screwing up other people's minds. The guy from yeah, Freddy yeah. Cougar and all that, he got a star down there. They gave him an inverted <laughs> pentagram. You see what mm-hmm. I mean? So this is, yeah. I mean, so this, and then look, and you're here. This is why I say you got to, you know, get to your own peak because, you know, meanwhile, I, I, whatever your story is, forget it for a moment. And look, this is what they're doing here. This is the only reason that you need to why you will want to come back to uh, in, in advancing yourself in this, and, it, and like right. I said, it, and it's available now. Good. Well, you know, okay. another thing I want to put. Let's go to the other extreme of the spectrum: death. Death. They program you to die. They program you with the medicines they advertise on TV. The age, you're old, you're feeble. You're going to get there. Even when you go into surgery, the doctor says, I'm going to send you someplace. And you go where they send you because they, they put those thoughts in your, in your mind. But we can overcome the negative impulses of ourselves dying if, they will, if we and don't listen to the programming that they are saying, at this age you do this, in this age you do this, in this age you do that, and of course you die. And I think that we should, as older people and younger people, remember that life and death is in the power of the tongue, and you do not let those people speak that negativeness into yourselves, because I had surgery, and the guy overdosed me, but I came back because I refused to go where he sent me. I remember that too, sis. And, you know, it's in, in family, um, if you have a question um, for Brother 7, you want to um, put something on it, press star 1 to get in the queue. Um, you know, sis, it's, it's interesting that you talk about um, not allowing other beings to put things on you and, to me, put the spells on you or follow the program that the, the quote, quote, gods have um, set up or, or, or instituting. To me, that's, that's all about we sh- should be at the point now, as Brother Seven was talking about, and the time frame of now being in the moment, you're writing your own program or code. Right. That's right. Not listening to what they have to tell you you're going to do at this age or at this time. And you, because of this genetics, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do that. That's, that's crazy. Right, because right. what it is is that you're, you would basically be nullifying the power of, of their egregor. And, and to just explain mm-hmm. this very simply, all the concepts that we've created in our mind, even the sun and the moon, has concentrated itself in our thoughts. You right. can actually get to the point to where you can remove even those. So all of the phenomena of, of what those entities or, or energies would have an effect mm-hmm. in doing will not have an effect. So it's like, but there's levels to this. It's like, you know, this is not, the, you know, you're going to jump right from there, right from the beginning. I mean, maybe, I mean, right. anything's possible, but think about it. There's still the whole process of just realizing energy. There's still the whole process of realizing your diet and how your diet connects into, yeah. into your energetic field. There's still the whole process mm-hmm. of realizing 
you know, the emotional aspects of this with, you know, your own vaporism sometimes to yourself and the whole emo and the emotional roller coaster and what goes up must come down all the time with every scenario that you enter, redundancies, you know, past healings. There's all these different mm-hmm. things that, that must be addressed, but it's easier to address when you have your, 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 your pinnacle or your beacon out there already to and so you can stay focused on it because when you're going through all of that those processes you know especially if you're going through them rapidly you know you you need to stay grounded you need to understand you know what am i what am i doing and also others around you need to understand that too because you know it's very important to some to to state at times you know what direction things are going in you put it in old black and white again the pen is more powerful than the sword put your hand down there on that paper (laughs) And write your intentions of, of this sovereignty yeah. and, and, yeah. And, and, and whatever you want to call it. And the reason is also is because it, it just makes sense from, from so many levels. Like we can't be sitting. This is also why it, when our elders, when, when, we, when we're having our elders, a great-grandmother, grandmother, whatever, there's nobody that even has enough cash to even take care of grandma these days. I mean, it's getting, mm-hmm. it's getting crazy. We couldn't build these bridges back if we wanted to. So we make these excuses. Well, you know, it's getting along and we just say all these different things before a being that can do anything. You know, I I just only encourage everyone, just like I encourage myself to, Hey, you know what? All of this stuff that even this far, this is seven years we've created social networks. We've made hundreds of videos. We've done TV, Mm -hmm. you know, I've done festivals and all these different things. Now we're going and inventing a water programming device you know, there's a social network, there's, you know, I could keep going on. We're now employing people. So all of those things, I accomplish about 85 to 90%, and I'm being modest, of that just right here from where I'm at and what I'm doing. There's not like a whole army back here because you'll notice there's a trend that when you're starting something and it's not like everything else, Oh, don't look for finding that many people who are on that same vibration because for them, it's like swimming up river. Mm-hmm. So that's where a part of the sobriety comes in is because you can really begin to educate yourself on only what's important. <laughs> like when I need to learn something, I can just go and write to this thing and, and hit a couple words. And if I'm willing, I can actually learn it if it's important to me. So what I'm just saying is, is that that's where our time should be spent. You see, because if we're still looking for this genie in the bottle, like this one thing you're going to do, this one supplement I'm going to buy, and then that's just going to change everything. It's about now becoming you again and getting on that process of how that works to start thinking for yourself again. You're originally an inventor creator. You have tons of ideas. This is the day of the desktop. You can really start creating your own products and all sorts of stuff. You have your holistic side at Etsy. If you're making some soaps and stuff like that, you can supplement your income, start becoming an entrepreneur right away, a conscious entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. There's an entire market. You can ride the circuit, which is all the conscious festivals, lightning in the bottle. You can go get booths there. Anything that you create, these people are coming from all over the world. They want, they want to see, they have the money. You know, it's, it's there. But if we, yep. again, have this interruption in front of us, that's what we're moving out the way. Like, this, this is where we're at right now. So I know we're, we're probably at that, that key point in the hour. I'm not sure. But I do yeah. want to, if there is time, if somebody had, does have questions, I, I can definitely answer those questions. But I guess at this point, I've given enough about, you know, yeah. what needs. Yes, you have. <laughs> um, so, Chris, Star One family, um, or I'm going to, you know, give Brother – a seven back his time, but, but real quick, thank you for bringing up that point of each one of us, um, you know, basically finding your own passion, which really equals your purpose, which when you find your passion and purpose, you really find your sovereignty. And that's yeah. how you really know that you have your passion and, and your purpose. And I was, um, I think last week, I was talking to the family um, kind of in a, in a different light, but I was noticing how I, I could feel the vibration of the spirit of the entrepreneurship among other folks. And you just even look at it from the big um, corporate perspective. I, and I, I take Hollywood. Let's just take Hollywood, for example, because I think that's the example that I use. We are now at the point where even Hollywood itself isn't 
it's not even viable. It's not even the end thing. You see, like, the Netflix. You see the Amazons. You see all of these other little one-offs that you never would have dreamed or even had a concept or, and or you see people putting their own work, um, you know, online themselves uh, with very little capital. So they are not tapping into these old archaic systems that tie them to someone else's program that forces them to be slaves. I literally, I, I'm seeing these other beings standing up their own thing to create their own sovereignty. And I, I even look at even me doing what, what I'm doing myself. It's just something that I created, um, you know. So thank you for bringing that out to the family that, you know, that's just something that each individual person can do and should be doing. And that exactly, and, and, it, and, and it has also nothing to do. Uh, well, I'll just say it like this: all this paperwork and all these kind of things. Like we, we want to see this on a spiritual level, exactly. and then we want to see it on the physical, and then all those other levels. They just got no choice but to bow down anyway. Exactly, and that's, and that's really how how we work, and that's that's how it's done. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Oh, so I'll, I'm oh. sorry. Go ahead, on brother Sean. Also, uh, the part when he was when you were saying about thinking and it setting the cogs off in your mind and taking you back at the time instead of just mm-hmm. being uh, that brings to me the concept the program of the rabbit hole. Yeah. Everybody want to keep jumping down into the rabbit hole and chasing information. Yep. Which which we know that there's tons of information out here that can totally keep you away from self. Mm-hmm. And everybody keep jumping in the rabbit hole, and I keep trying to tell people the thing to do is to stay out of the rabbit hole. You're not in it. Exactly. Well, put yourself in the rabbit hole. Right. And then you got to try and figure your way out, and it comes down to unlearning all that you've learned in order to become what you already were. Mm. Mm-hmm. Very well said. <laughs> exactly. That's it right <laughs> Brother, there. <laughs> Brother Wendell, you um have anything uh you want to put on it for uh Brother Seven? I wanna give him back some of his time. The family being shot tonight, so that's on you all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm just I'm just glad that brother confirms, you know, my thought process. Oh, mm-hmm. Cause what it, cause, cause I'm sitting here processing as he's speaking and uh, etching that in my little brain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I get you, brother. Sis, did you um, have any um, a thing that are last words for Brother Seven? Thank you so much, Brother Seven. I really, really, really love what you have. You say you say it so eloquently and mm-hmm. so and so clearly that we can understand and understand all of this, you know, when you break it down for us. And I appreciate you for doing that. And oh, your you're more than welcome. It's, it's my pleasure. Well, brother, Thanks. before you leave us, before I let you go, I do, if you don't mind, um, if you can just tell us about um, some of your upcoming classes that are um, coming up. Um, and as well as other things that you have in the works that you're bringing forth to the public? Most certainly. Uh, primarily what we're working on now is we're working on this karma-free wealth or open-source wealth, where we basically mm-hmm. just want to demystify this whole thing with money. <laughs> because if everyone mm-hmm. wasn't crabbing with each other all the time in these industries, then money actually wouldn't be a problem. Have you ever noticed when you mm-hmm. go to a job, it's like they make it intentional to either make it hard on you there, make sure you can't get to the next level of the job. You know, you got mm-hmm. someone thinking they go, you're going to take their job, so they don't want even mm-hmm. to give you any pointers of how things work. And this is pretty much the environment. So what we're working on now is that we understand that there's so many avenues available now that are just on the Internet, which actually untether mm-hmm. you from any kind of death, that if we already demystified this secret behind marketing and learning the trends like minimalism and all of these different things that come across that 
basically equate to a person, hey, let me see what they have, and hey, let me check out what they're doing. And also we're giving people the, the wherewithal to begin to represent, well, this has been going on for four years, but right now they can represent products that are vividly available to assist people on different levels. And then they mm-hmm. receive not only commissions for that, they also can be a part of this new thing that we're doing, which is we're launching this huge uh, project of, of a water programming device called Phi Aqua right now. And this is going to be revolutionary, but it, it's on so many levels, not only that the, we can program water with this technology that we have, but we're also giving people the opportunity to represent the device and make their way to sovereignty off the wave that we're already going to cause because we're going to give all the materials away. We're going to, you know, we're doing this is what I'm saying. And this is something that we're already doing now with, we have, I think it's something like 40 products on our store from Mm -hmm. Tibetan medicine to cell salts. Like these are Mm -hmm. all areas, like it gets you right to whatever is the situation to get you your, your, your relief. And, uh, Mm -hmm. And, and so that's what's going on. So not only do we have that there for people who are experiencing something and need some solutions, we also have it so that people could fix their financial situation with it. And then now mm-hmm. what we're doing is we're enhancing that by we have training going on right now. And then we also have this product that's coming that everyone's going to want. And this is going to allow you to basically go into doors that would maybe be shut edge wise. Uh, so mm-hmm. there's that. With the university, there's uh, semester three that's looming in the distance. Like everyone wants me to nail down a date. It is going to be this year. <laughs> but basically what mm-hmm. it is is that we're on semester two because many people told me that, hey, you know, if, if you could start to condense this in subjects, what would that be mm-hmm. like? And so that's where the university was born is me just sitting down and taking the time to go through an actual curriculum and then developing mm-hmm. even manuals to explain this these topics in, in, uh, in different kind of formats, but basically to get you to in all areas like celestial mechanics, like if you want to understand how you can orientate yourself with the stars properly, internal cleansing, what is the real process for cleansing the body, what's really going on there, what are you eating, current and currency, how does your money actually connect with the energetic potential that's going on in your body and also what's going on in your environment, the conflicts that you're having when you start leaking energy. So we cover Mm -hmm. all these topics or I cover all these topics step by step. And that's what the university is. And uh, so right now that that's, what's going on that that's, you know, (laughs) more than enough, but there's obviously secret energy as a website. People can check that out. It is open source spirituality. So it has a lot of resources Mm -hmm. in there for you to check out if you want to know more about this. And uh, But right now, again, knowing is a feeling more so than it is something that you have to do. So mm-hmm. just that feeling of, you know, restoring yourself and knowing, okay, you know what? I got what I need. I heard what I need to hear. You don't got to right. tell me twice. Like, I exactly. remember all these times where, you know, there's a point where you get it. You're like, all right, I see how you are. You know, I can't take <laughs> you for granted anymore. This is how right. I look at the reality. It's like, I can't keep playing these games on myself. I'm grown now. Mm-hmm. Eight years ago, mm-hmm. it seemed like a whole different thing from what was going on right now, eight years. So what's this other next eight years going to actually look like? And, you know, and then there's so much demystification. It gets to the point where when somebody says, you know, can you make it easy? Well, that all depends on what you call hard, because (laughs) if we weren't so busy always acting like this is so difficult, like this knowledge that we're talking about, it would be easy to us because we already know it. And like Mm -hmm. even things like being in the rabbit hole being demystified, like the movements of the planet Venus, the five and the Mm eights, you know, all of those different things actually connect with explaining to a person the fertility symbol is the rabbit you know, mm-hmm. all you know, the Easter point, and then when Easter comes around, you'll notice that the Venus planet sits right on the horizon like it's the mm-hmm. sun and rises in the same place that the sun rises. And then during that time, everything is fertile. So you look outside, mm-hmm. you look at the grass, everything is acting like it's ready to mate with something. And then also you yourself start feeling like the urge, like you have more energy. <laughs> and that's mm-hmm. that time to where you do your manifesting and creating, because when you create at that point right there, it will be the strongest. And then as it goes mm-hmm. throughout the year, it rolls into these other cycles, which give it all the layers. So this is the great Cosmo crater. It's basically a clock that's inside of the sky encoded in stars that our ancestors knew and formed their language on it. So they were always manifesting. Now we mm-hmm. have somewhat of a virus in the system that's diverting the power and the energy behind our words or our worlds. 
And the only thing that we have to do is begin to return back or forward, as I call it, to our intonation, means what's going on, how loud are you thinking, get that actually mm-hmm. under, in, in control, and then start really going into your true potential. And the step-by-step to that, there's free recordings. You know, the university has a premium to it. Mm-hmm. Ambassador training has a premium to it because when you give things for free, sometimes people don't think it has a value. But 90-something mm-hmm. percent of all of our content is still free. So if yep. you want to ride your way all the way to where you need to go, you can do that on one of the last recent recordings on SoundCloud. And so this mm-hmm. is really about us making, making this make sense. So the sense part of this also is if people need assistance on the financial side, you can check out spirittext.com and you can apply there. Everyone is accepted. And then you can just get the knowledge and the materials. You could do this by posting links on your social media, et cetera, or you could just look at it, learn all the knowledge. If you want to know about good design to take your own business to the next level, like when you create these clunky looking websites that got the old buttons and you think you really didn't done something and you're wondering why <laughs> nobody has come to it, it's because mm-hmm. there, and then also how simple this is now. Don't be looking at this new site and be like, oh, that's so complex. Man, what they did was is they made it as simple as possible so they could sell it to as many people as possible. Why? Because mm-hmm. complex things, there's only a few people that go for that kind of stuff, right? Right. So right. everything that has ever been your problem, they are capitalizing off of creating solutions for those problems because that same process is our uniqueness. All of the problems we're experiencing in the world is because the unique people don't know who they are. Mm. So you see how the knowledge just rolls right on itself. That's how it proves itself. It doesn't need to get someone to bear witness. It doesn't need all of that. It can roll on its own like a wheel If it's perfect, and in the moment that something is said that's a lie or not true, it doesn't fit in with the blueprint. So this is how we show people in this lesson that you can use your body as the immediate map, and then you can start progressing from there and realizing the rest of the spheres around you and how they're all connected. So, yeah, so this is what it is. It's broken down completely. So that way it could be so you can unlearn the the foolishness, which is a lot Mm -hmm. going on. You can get closer to the because there's a fake matrix. That's the world that everyone is living in now with this digital electronics. There's the Mm -hmm. real matrix, which is nature. If you learn Mm -hmm. the real matrix code, which is nature's code, then you can learn how the codes to the body. And then once Mm. you learn the code to the body, then you can unlock because the body is like a hermetically sealed vessel then you can unlock it and then the 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 what we would call the spirit f- flies flick free but the interesting part is it doesn't fly free because all of a sudden there was a key turn and the body let it out it's because it realized that it could mm. and, had, and had already been free so even wow. concepts like death is experiments of doing the impossible how are you going to com- convince an immortal being it can die Let's see this. <laughs> it's like, man, y'all keep setting new bars for yourself. Death is the per- – mean, people are more afraid of life than they are mm. death, Rhonda. Wow. If these people had gotten on the bad path and didn't thought it wasn't going to end for some reason, look out. Mm. <laughs> they wow. need death in their lives until they are taught what life truly is. And that's the process that it teaches in the elders. The planet is a huge elder within itself. Just coming like, well, I'm not, but I'm not coming without no spankings, though. You're going to pay for these lessons. And that's Mm kind of like this emulated in the college tuition. It's like it's emulated, though, in our life. When we make mistakes, we pay. (laughs) Right. So when we know that maybe we can work more to learn from others' mistakes. Right. And then save Mm -hmm. ourselves the energy. And get ready to flow with that. So that's all we're talking about. Store your energy. Stop leaking. Stay out of the dualistic point. Get creative. Find your uniqueness because that's what's needed in the world that's missing. So that means that that's how you'll make your way in this world. There's no limits to it, to what you can do. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is discover it for yourself. And I think that that's the clearest way to it. And then everything else the person is going to have to do or the being is going to have to do. Wow. Well, with that said, Brother Seven, again, thank you so much. Yeah. It has been a pleasure as always. Um, you know, family, you can check him out at secretenergy.com. And then also for the class, and, and for that site, 
uh, trust me, it has a wealth of information. Um, as he said, for free. I have pulled uh, several things off of that site um, from a literature book perspective. So that's secretenergy.com. Um, if you want to check out some of the classes in his university, uh, that is university.secretenergy.com. But you can also get to university from secretenergy.com. So I look forward to your projects, brother. I am going to check a few out myself. You sparked my interest on quite a few. Um, so I want to thank you again for your time, and I want to thank you for all that you do is truly appreciated. You're more than welcome, Holness. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to coming forward with y'all soon. Okay, yes, absolutely. Thank you, brother. Peace and love. Okay, Holness. Okay. Oh. All right. <laughs> okay, family. So um, we're going to wind down. That's uh, We're going to conclude tonight. So I hope that um, you got a lot of value out of what Brother Seven was bringing tonight. Um he has a great body of work. If you're not familiar with him, I, you could definitely go on YouTube and type in his name. He has a wealth of videos there. He also has a lot of videos and literature on secretenergy.com. Um, we will be back next week with the topic that I said we were going to have this week, which will be on the shift and ascension. So that will fit in perfectly based on what we spoke on tonight with Brother Seven. So um, I am going to give some last words from the family. Let me open back uh, Brother Wendell back up. Hey, Brother, you have any last words for the family? Yeah, that was good on top of them greens. That was good. Yeah, I heard you <laughs> scraping. I said, this little raggedy self eat, eat some beans. <laughs> Uh, some greens. Now, I had my beans and rice before I came on the air. I said, let me meet them because all I hear is forks clanging. <laughs> I'm like, there yeah, you go went, again. <laughs> yeah, that went real good with some collard greens. I was glad he did. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. Absolutely. He definitely uh, brought some some great stuff into play tonight. Um, yeah. Sis Sandra, you have any last words for the family? Yes, I do. And I just <laughs> like <laughs> it's all about your own soul salvation. You got to get rid of that stinking thinking and focus on the now and your progress of your your own soul being saved. And I, I just loved what he had to say because if you put a lot of those things in practice and put your body in the right energy, mm-hmm. man, he's on track and you'll be Absolutely. on track too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because that's where we all uh, should be headed. It's working in the principle of now and creating your reality. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Sid. Create your own reality. Yes, exactly. And don't expect nobody to come down and save you. Cause you there, save that's you. why I say that every week. There ah. is no so-and-so Messiah. I say it every nope. week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, sis. Uh, Brother Sean, you have any last words for the family? Yeah. Uh, piggyback off of your letting the people know about seven who don't know. He has a plethora of work out there, and you might yes. well start with it with his first works, Code of the Matrix, because yes, a free if you just book go jumping in, right? If you go jumping in at this point, you she, you might able to get more lost. So, That's uh, a good point. Take it from the beginning. Get off into the etymology of words. He has videos where he breaks all of that down and brings you up to this point. Um, I'm with his spirit tech thing, um, member of the university. Mm-hmm. So um, if you really want to know, go within and you'll be able to correlate and find exactly what he's talking about. But look for it as to how it pertains to self. You're not yeah. trying to relive somebody else's experience. It's based upon what you've been through in this right. life cycle. 
That's right. Shit, quit, quit trying to go back to ancient Egypt or ancient mm. Kemet or a TV line or whatever ancient names you want to use. Quit going back there. That energy ain't for you. Right. We left that energy as ancestors a long time ago, and we left it for a reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, okay, family, we're going to wind down. I want to thank you so much for uh, tuning in tonight. We will be back next Thursday at 7. Uh, we will be, the topic will be the shift and the ascension. So with that, I want to say peace and love, and we're going to rock out uh, with actually Solange. I really like this song, Cranes in the Sky. So peace and love, family.